100 lap race. Hi folks, Lee Diffie with you here trackside for the Iowa Corn Indy 300 and we have to say right from the outset we are speeding things up tonight, not necessarily on track but here as far as the program is concerned, uh, race officials have brought the start of the race forward, we've got some pretty severe weather surrounding us here outside uh, turn one here and it's moving to the south, there was actually a tornado watch in place uh, for the speedway, we hope and fingers crossed that that weather will move away and allow us to get this event done, we only need to make it to lap 151, just one lap further than halfway to complete the race so all looking good at the moment but there is some threatening weather just adding a twist to a championship that's already fascinating Indy 500 champ Ryan Hunter Ray uh, has not got a top five since winning the big one Scott Dixon defending series champion he only has one podium and winless and then you add in JPM one Pablo Montoya returning to IndyCar after years in Formula One and NASCAR and he breaks a 14 year drought he wins in the series and he's got some real momentum going it's good for Penske at the moment but there's drama there because co-championship leader Will Power last weekend poked a hornet's nest. Will Power leads, he's the championship leader as well. well right now it's all going the way of Will Power. Montoya is working on Will Power. A little bit of block. Oh, something came Blocking off the car. On Left front the and fence for Montoya is gone. It seems to have affected Power more. Oh, NASCAR. Oh, 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 down low, oh, Power. Castor Nevis oh. did not like that blocking. This will be penalized. I was breaking, I let him by. And that was a pretty nasty move by Will Power and his teammate. Drive through penalty for blocking. There it is from the stewards, black flag to Will Power. Let's just keep our head in the game and go here. In our team, there is no team owners, we're going for it. And unfortunately, um, <laughs> I'm not the one to, to make the calls. I know what to say, he's my teammate. <laughs> right. Another penalty, another drive through, and uh, another really good opportunity loss. It was only two weeks ago that Will Power had a 39-point championship lead. That has all gone. It's evaporated. It's he and Elio at the top. Simon Pagano in third has uh, gained 50 points on power in the last three races. He's got some momentum. And there is one, Pablo Montoya, who himself now is saying, I am a championship contender. But there's mounting pressure on Will Power. Kelly Stavis is with him. Lee, as we just saw, even with that drive-through penalty, which dropped Will Power from third to tenth, he still sits atop the point standings. But Will, now you've got company in the form of Elio Castroneves. You've had about a week to see the replays and to think about that race at Pocono. What might you have done differently? Well, obviously, uh, not moved in reaction. I mean, they wouldn't have got a penalty then. So, uh, yeah, lesson learned. And uh, obviously, it's a bit of a hit in the points. But uh, you know, move on to here and see if we can. You can make up some here or just, just have a good race here, you know, just have fun and do what I do. All right, well, for the other side of that story, of course, Elio Castroneves, he's standing by with Jan Bikas. In fact, he is standing by as we rock on the back of the pace truck around, get an 80 mile per hour ride, and I notice that your hair is in perfect shape here, by the way. Okay, seriously, now the positions have changed. You are ahead of willpower today on the grid. Do you think you're going to have a charging willpower in your mirrors in no time? Well, um, I think so. I think we have a very fast cars. Uh, not only myself, uh, Will, but also Juan Pablo. We just got to keep going, man. We have a two ganas in front of us. I can't just look in the back. I got to actually look forward. And right now, uh, uh, my mess of memory knows how to pass those guys, and that's what I'm looking for. Have you had a team meeting? If you end up racing each other, have you been told how you should race each other? Yes. Um, we still have the same plan. The plan is uh, bring this championship to Roger Penske, whoever it's going to be. That's the luck of a draw, but uh, at this point, we've got to make that happen. Should be a great shootout tonight, Lee. Oh, Jan really looking forward to it. And for the third Penske driver, Juan Pablo Montoya, he may be the first driver this season to win from pole position, but tonight he starts 19th and had a real scare in qualifying. Lucky to get away from it. He'll be looking to come through the field. So, too, will the defending race winner, James Hitchcliffe. Starting a little further back than where he'd like, but the car, he says, is strong. We'll hear from him when we come back and talk more about this incredibly strong Andretti Autosport team here at Iowa Speedway. You're watching IndyCar Live, brought to you by Verizon and IndyCar. Driving technology, 2014 Verizon IndyCar Series. Back in Iowa as we get closer to the start of tonight's race with Bob Bowman, the president of the Iowa Corn Promotional Board. When we talk about corn, we think about dinner. 
quite a few more opportunities to use this though, right? Oh yeah, there's thousands of uses for corn. Uh, our, the one that we're showcasing tonight is ethanol. It's important uh, to our, our farmers because it's one of our main uses, plus it's important to our consumers. What does being an associated with this event, which you have been for many years, do for your group? Well, we've been doing this for eight years, and it's important to us because it it allows us to tag on to the, the interest that's in the Indy series and lets us talk and give our message to the consumers. Thanks again for having us and for welcoming IndyCar. That's Bob Bowman with the Iowa Corn Promotional Board. The Iowa Corn Indy 250 is great. Here comes the Go Caddy car. Will he be able to get past the Verizon machine? He will. So James Hinchcliffe will grab the lead with one lap complete. Well, this is how good James Hinchcliffe's car is. He's getting ready to put the seven of Sebastian Bourdais one lap down. He's been the only leader. He led 19 laps ever at this track before today. So far, he's dominated, led 178 laps. James Hinchcliffe taking the win, his third of the year. We have a great track record here, but man, I can't believe we led that whole thing. And the guys were awesome in the pits, man. I'm just so proud of these boys. This is awesome. It was an amazing year. Last year, Hinchcliffe led 228 of the 250 laps as we welcome you back to IndyCar Live, presented by Verizon. And repeating what we mentioned earlier, a, an abbreviated pre-race ceremony and show because of threatening weather. And talk about threatening, yeah, Andretti Autosport are once again, they've won five of the seven years here, whether it be Andretti Green or Andretti Autosport, they've won four in a row and are aiming for five. This is their track. If the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is Penske's track, this is Michael's track. Time to talk to the defending winner. Here's James Hinchcliffe with Kevin. And nobody, Lee, was more dominant in this race at any time. Inch led 226 of 250 last year. We're going an extra 50 laps this year, but you've got some work to do starting in 14. Can you get to the front? I think so. For, that was a really cute picture of Michael that you guys were showing. I don't know when that was from. That was, that was awesome. Uh, no, yeah, I think we can. Honestly, the, the car was really strong in practice, and we kind of stepped on it a bit in qualifying. I think a lot of guys got caught out with the track conditions changing, and we were just wicked loose hanging on to it. But uh, we got an extra 50 laps to try and move up there. You know, as we've been talking about, guys are great in the pits, car's strong, so hopefully we can get there. And conditions are so much different than when you practice going to, the way they're going to be tonight. Yeah, and, and even a bit different than what we thought they were going to be. You know, you try and set the car up for what you think the track's going to do all day and the weather's going to do all day, and that changes a bit. So it's, it's going to adjust a couple of things, I think, in the car at the start. You're going to have to stay on top of the weather as, you know, the temp drops and, you know, wind potentially picks up as the storm moves in. And, you know, like you said before, it's kind of a race to lap 151, and then we'll go from there. Right, thanks. Over to Kelly. With Marco Andretti, who has certainly played a role in that Andretti Autosport streak of four wins in a row, yours came back in 2011. What's it like to show up at a track where you've had a win and the team as a whole has just been dominant? It's too long ago, 2011. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, the first things first, I mean, we're, we're lucky to roll off with race cars that we do, you know. I think the, the Snapple car hasn't really showed its potential in qualifying. Um, you know, I'm actually really pleased with, with the race car, so hopefully we can back that up here in a bit. All right, Marco Andretti will roll off eighth, Lee. And Kelly, if three of the four Andretti Autosport drivers have been victorious, it was their young rookie, Carlos Munoz, who qualified the best of the quartet. He did have the benefit of going last, though, and learned in qualifying from his teammates, so he will start in the top five. A man who also won for Andretti is Tony Kanaan. TK, the Indy 500 winner, the series champ, really wants to get a win this year. Could it be tonight? We'll talk to him next. IndyCar Live presented by Verizon continues as we race towards the green flag here at Iowa Speedway. And seeing that green flag first will be three-time and defending series champion Scott Dixon, who claimed his 21st career pole position here a year ago. But you know what? For Chip Ganassi's organization, for the first time since 2002, a team started a racing season with the defending Indy 500 winner and the defending series champion. It hasn't worked out very good for them so far because it's been nine months since Chip's guys actually won a race. And Robin Miller, they're looking to change that statistic here tonight. It's hard to imagine, Lee, that Scott Dixon, defending champion, hasn't been to victory lane, but he has a good attitude about it. And Dixie, your last victory was at Houston. It's tonight the night you break the streak. I was just admiring that picture of Chip there. That was <laughs> quite a, that was a really nice picture of Chip. So, uh, yeah, no, obviously the main goal for us is to win tonight. And I think uh, it's exceptional for, for us to have, you know, all four cars in the top seven. 
um, you know, it's big for us. So target lockout front row. You know, uh, we just, you know, the hard part is trying to keep them there. So we'll see what, you know, what happens. All right, Ryan Briscoe starts fourth. Came off a of fourth at Pocono last year. His last victory was 2012 in Sonoma. Is this the night you can get this monkey off your back, kid? I'll give it a shot. I mean, uh, you know, I feel like as a team we've been just getting better and better. A bit of a slow start this year. It's been disappointing, but. Uh, we are getting stronger. Um, I feel like uh, carrying momentum from Pocono. We've got the horsepower from Chevrolet. Um, definitely, you know, up here in the top four spots. So really proud of the job they're doing all year long. And uh, you know, we'll work together tonight. See what happens at the end of it. Thank you. All right. The hungriest guy in the paddock's probably Tony Kanan. He had one since the 2013 Indianapolis 500. Kanan on the outside looking at Briscoe. Kanan will challenge for the lead off of four. And Tony Kanan has raced from 14th to the lead. He's led over 100 laps here, Mike. No one more important than this one. Bring him home for the first time in two years. Tony Kanan has the 7-Eleven car back in victory lane. Green, green, green. Marco Andretti by a nose at the exit of one. It's been a long time since we've seen Marco out in front of a race. How about that? Tario has been so tough, but Marco obviously tougher at this point of the race. And oh, on the inside. It's a great move. Wow. He, he surprised him. That was a great bit of driving by Marco Andretti. Marco Andretti wins the Iowa Corn Indy 250. If it wasn't for the win, we were going to talk about it. <laughs> and of course, those highlights, and in particular, the win for Tony Kanan came with Andretti Autosport. Now you need to try to break this winless streak for Target Chip Ganassi Racing. After all the heartache, from Houston and Pocono, is that giving you more motivation? For sure, Jan. I think uh, you know I've always uh, worked better under pressure, and uh, the pressure is on. I think uh, we had some misfortunes in the last two races, but I'm pretty confident this weekend. I think uh, you know the TNT Target car; it's uh, it's pretty good here. Uh, Chevy gave us a great you know power engine to like have a lot of cars in the top five. You know, if you look at it the way we qualify, so uh, I'm confident. But you never know. Remember, there's two Target Chip Ganassi racing cars right on the front row. Lee? Driving for victory. That's something that Ed Carpenter has achieved this year. In fact, his team has won a couple of times. The only owner driver in the field. You can follow Ed and the rest of the Verizon IndyCar Series drivers by downloading the IndyCar 14 app by visiting verizon.com slash IndyCar at the App Store or Google Play. Verizon and IndyCar driving technology. When we come back, IndyCar champ Paul Tracy, NBC Sports F1 man, David Hawks, Hobbo's here. Threatening weather, a tied championship, seventh eighths of a mile track where it's a 17 second lap and speeds of 185 miles per hour. We have got it all at Iowa Speedway. We've even got David Hobbs joining Paul Tracy and myself here at Iowa Speedway. It's great to have you part of the team. But Paul, let's start with you first. You never got to race at this track in your IndyCar career. In fact, it's your first visit to the facility. Your initial thoughts and also what's been grabbing your eye on track? Well, I'm completely impressed with the facility. Great people here, great crowd. Uh, this track reminds me of uh, Nazareth or Milwaukee, but it just seems really quick and a little bit more bumpy than other tracks. There's a big bump in turn one, and it's been giving the guys fits and sending the car straight for the wall. As we see Hinchcliffe right here, he hits that bump right there, and then the front end skates out and goes straight straight along for the wall. So it's, uh, it's a handful. It's been a handful tonight. What else are you looking for in tonight's race? Well, with the weather that's in the area, it's going to be an all-out bare-knuckle fight for 150 laps, and I, I would expect to see Tony Kanaan is just going to go for the throat right at the start and try to really take control of the race because he's desperate for a win. Remember, you, well, you only have to get to lap 151 of this 300-lap race for it to be complete if that weather, in fact, arrives. Of course, everybody knows you from uh, NBCSN's Formula One coverage. We've got a thrilling championship there between Nico Rosberg and Lewis Hamilton. But as is the case here, and I know that you watch IndyCar a lot, tied at the top, going into round 12, couldn't ask for it to be any better. You couldn't ask for anything to be better because it is the same as the Formula One. The two Mercedes drivers have been swapping the lead all through the year. Now there's only four points separates them. We've got a tie at the top of the IndyCar championship, which is absolutely incredible, with the third member of the same team lurking in the background with his pole and win uh, last week in Pocono. Juan Pablo Montoya is on the move. So those two guys at the top, Will Parham, Castro Neves, has really got to watch out. So it's a very, very close championship. And it's unlike, just like Formula One, it's the same teammates. So it's, it's a bit strange, that really, the same year. But anyway, both top series in the open wheel got these championships going. Close together, same team. Yeah, we're being spoiled, aren't we? It's a terrific <laughs> year for open wheel racing, that's for sure. Thank you for watching IndyCar Live, presented by Verizon.
when we come back, it is time for that green flag and it's time to start round 12. Things are going to be moving fast tonight. Apexing the midpoint of the 2014 IndyCar season, the focus has remained on Penske teammates Will Power and Elio Castro Neves, each with a win in Detroit to begin the summer swing. But having seesawed back and forth in points the last four races, heading into Iowa, they are now tied. And with Juan Pablo Montoya's return to victory last week in Pocono, a third Penske teammate has entered the fight. But this is Iowa, a short track that Andretti Autosport has dominated by winning four races in a row. Perhaps this is the night 2012 Series champion Ryan hunter Ray can get back into the race for the IndyCar Championship. It's time for round 12 of the Verizon IndyCar Series. It is the Iowa Corn Indy 300 from Newton, Iowa on the shortest track, but a very high speed track for the Verizon IndyCar Series. Time now for the command. Race fans, it is time for those most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command for the Iowa Corn Indy 300 is president of Iowa Corn Promotional Board, Bob Bowman. Drivers, start your corn ethanol powered engines. Front row is fired up, and of course, Scott Dixon starts on the pole for the third time in eight years. But you heard Robin say he has never won this race. Now, remember on the outside, Tony Kanan, I agree with Paul Tracy. I think Tony Kanan on the high side is going for it right away. Kelly? Jan, back here in row four, you'll find another Chip Ganassi driver in the form of Charlie Kimball, who had his best qualifying effort in seventh. He'll start alongside Marco Andretti, who won here in 2011 and is eager to keep that Andretti Autosport winning streak alive. Kevin? Kelly here in row seven, we find the last two winners, James Hinchcliffe, Ryan hunter and the team has won five of seven, so watch for them. But they're both looking to get things jump-started. Hinch, no better than fifth, and since winning the 500 and leading the championship, hunter Ray four finishes of 16th and worse, Robin. Kevin, Juan Montoya starts in the 10th row, but don't let that fool you. He had fast time in Friday's practice session, had a big moment in qualifying. He's gonna have to come from the back, but knowing Montoya, and as good as he's been running, he'll get to the front pretty quick, Lee. He said after he had that moment in qualifying, this is going to hurt. He thought he was going to crash, but he didn't. He pulled it off and was able to complete qualifying. Hey, a quick reminder, don't miss a chance to get in on Honda's fastest seat in sports sweepstakes by logging on to shophonda.com and you could be just like Pamela Dusso. Hi. <laughs> from Santa Maria, California. She's having a great time. Pamela, congratulations. How is it riding with Ari Leindyke? It's very fun. Good. So exciting. Ari will, uh, Ari will take you on the ride of your life for sure. And by logging on to shophonda.com, Pamela won this opportunity to start yes, tonight's did. race. You could do the same, riding along with Indy 500 champion Ari Leyendijk in the two-seater. Fantastic stuff. And it's time now to take a closer look at this track with Paul Tracy and Paul. Uh, it might be a short track, but boy, is it fast. Well, you want to be an Indy Car Series driver, you got to be able to do all kinds of tracks. You have all kinds of shapes and sizes and all the Iowa track is the smallest. Texas is a mid-sized track. Indianapolis, 202.5 miles. Pocono, a big track. So they all they come in all shapes and sizes. And to excel, you gotta figure it out. Gives you a wonderful comparison, doesn't it? It is time now to take a look at how they line up with the Mother's Polish starting grid. And as we've already told you, it's an all Ganassi front row. Ganassi, uh, Castro Neves rather spoiled the party because it was 1-2-3 qualifying yesterday, which was a pretty fast session. It was very fast. Marco Andre down there on row four. Look at these guys. James Hinchin last year's winner, Hunter Ray. The year before that, those are going to want to get to the front and they want to get there fast. So we see Juan Pablo, he's going to be in a hurry to get to the front and try to get to lap 50 and make something happen. Going to be in fight. Got some nice onboards to show you. Let's climb aboard the National Guard entry. Graham Rahal has this view for us, and he, despite his 15th place qualifying position, is very happy with his race car. So, too, James Hinchcliffe, the United Fiber and Data view aboard the 27. Simon Pagino, big mover in the championship, with thanks to Lucas Oil, will give us this viewpoint. Marco Andretti, with thanks to Verizon, will show us this. Can he pull off another win? And Novolog, Flexpen, 
brings us this view for Charlie Kimball. New winner last year, can he be another winner this year? And we told you a little earlier that Ed Carpenter in the fuzzy Chevrolet shows us this view. Verizon streaming reminder, download the IndyCar 14 app, verizon.com slash IndyCar, the App Store or Google Play. It's Verizon and IndyCar driving technology. I wonder who's going to drive the fastest tonight in the Iowa Corn Indy 300 under check. the lights. When you're ready. I can really thankfully say, I'm going to touch wood while I say this, the weather seems to be moving away from us. So keep those fingers crossed that we're going to get all 300. Yes, 300, normally 250 laps here, but an additional 50 laps tonight for this 12th round. Neither guy on the front row has won a race this year. It's time to go in Iowa for an extra 50 laps and Scott Dixon leads the field to green. Castro Neves trying to get down the inside there. Canaan making Kanaan. a move on the outside. He was a little bit behind in the start, but here he comes on the top side, and he wants to lead this first lap. But, but Dixon holds tough on the inside. Look at the yellow and blue car, the Snapple entry for Andretti Autosport. Marco Andretti as Dixon does lead the first lap, but only marginally over his teammate. Andretti loves that high line. Watch that yellow car. Marco's determined to win. I think Tony's got the run. He got the run around the outside, so he was the first guy to really make that top line work. And as we see the other cars back in the field, Marco starting to work the top side, trying to make a move on Briscoe. Hunter Ray has moved up four positions. And you can see Marco here up on the top as he hits those bumps and the front starts to slide. Briscoe's trying to keep it down up off of him. And this is what it's going to be like all night. This is something I believe he inherited from his father, Michael. Michael Andretti, although he was your biggest rival, Paul, he was fantastic on the high line on ovals. And Marco has in inherited that trait. There is the yellow DHL machine for Ryan Hunter-Ray. He's been victorious here before, and he's the biggest mover. Take that back, Joseph Newgarden's the biggest mover. He's jumped five spots, Hunter-Ray's gained four. Yes, but these guys want to get in the mix early on, just in case this race is called. The guys that qualified badly, people like Juan Pablo Montoya, want to get right in the mix here because if the race is called, they need to be in a position to try and win it. Carl, uh, uh, Sebastian Bourdais, excuse me, in the Mystic Entry, just making life a little difficult there. Briscoe and Andretti going at it, and fast on the scene is Ed Carpenter in the fuzzy Chevrolet. This is really a good track for Ed. He's really good at these bank tracks. He's really good at Indianapolis as he's starting to make a move. As you see, he's going to try to sneak to the high side, but... Marco drives a little bit of a high line, so it really doesn't give him the opportunity. He's right against the wall, that's getting close. So uh, Marco is really kind of driving his line, so there's not really a place for, for Ed to go. He's going to have to try and go down low. That's oh, he'll come back now, too. This is the straight. He oh, about yeah. two seconds. That's the only time these guys aren't turning. Right from here, going into turn three and four. You see that distance that Carlos Munoz lost there as he tried to execute the move. Hunter Ray's got by Bordeaux, you may have noticed that. And right behind those guys, here comes Will Power, co-championship leader, dived on the inside of Sebastian Bordeaux. There he is, side by side, and that position should stick. Ed Carpenter on the inside of Marco Andretti, couldn't quite do it there. He's really working Marco over, and it's okay. so tough with these big wings and the level of downforce and the level of turbulence that these cars have. It's really tough to stick your nose that close behind another car because you lose all the downforce. As we see, Marco runs a high line. Ed's trying to take the low line, but yeah. just can't quite pull it work. off without having the, the, the track open up. As you exit the corners, as you, you, you've got to go up. And so oh, he's got it unless now. Unless you can pull it off. Got it. He had a good center, good center through the corner. Right and on your corner. And he's cleared him clear. now, so he wow. can move up the line and try to take the air, as he does right there. Pull the air off the front of Marco's car. Well, she's got a full aerodynamic road racing kit on them, so they have got a lot of aero helping them. A lot, about 5,000 pounds of downforce. But the problem with that is, of course, the turbulence. And here comes it, Marco's teammate, Ryan Hunter Ray, who's pulled himself up to the field. With terrific drive in these uh, opening laps. Up front, less than a second between Tony Kanaan and Ganassi teammate Scott Dixon. Elio Castro Neves runs third. That's what it looks like first to second. Brian Briscoe is fourth. Carpenter, you just saw slide into fifth place. Then Marco Andretti, teammate Hunter Ray, Munoz, Power, Bordet in the top ten. Montoya has dropped a position. He's back. You're watching NBCSN's coverage of IndyCar brought to you by Iowa Corn. Fill up with ethanol. It's renewable, better for our environment, and grown by Iowa's farmers. And by National Guard. Become a citizen soldier. Learn more at nationalguard.com.
Iowa Speedway turning on quite the show already on the shortest oval that is raced in the Verizon IndyCar Series. Race leader Tony Kanaan. We go back, look at this. Elio Castro Neves has got around Scott Dixon and so too has Ryan Briscoe. So all of a sudden the pole sitter finds himself in fourth place. Well, he seems to be dropping off the pace. Yeah, maybe the handle is just slightly gone away. He just doesn't, uh, he's not using a lot of the track. Uh, it doesn't really look like he's gone loose by any means. Just the speed just doesn't look there but as, the, as Briscoe just pulls away as we we watch Charlie Kimball come around. Now watch this in-car camera. You can see the vibration of the camera. And as we watch him on the start, coming up through the gears, he backed off a little bit going in and immediately got swarmed by cars on the left and the right. And you can see just another car around the outside. And as we come down the back straightaway, he comes in and hits a bump. And the rear just snaps out on him there. So, boy, you live that there. It's just not fun when that happens. And to highlight how drastic that was for Charlie Kimball, he started seventh. He runs 17th, losing 10 positions. We've already got one car down a lap. That's Houston race winner Carlos Guentes for Dale Coyne Racing. is the only car not on the lead lap at the moment as we race lap 25 of 300 the increased race distance by some 50 laps this year as will power is a big mover in this pack as he starts to put pressure on marco andretti now seventh place the guys are starting to settle in now get a feel for their cars what they're going to change on the first stop the conditions right now are much different than what they had yesterday for practice and qualifying. It was quite a lot hotter yesterday or today. Big run by power as he makes a slice down the inside. He had a big, really good exit there. Got it down in front of. We learned yesterday that Will was not feeling well at all. Started on Thursday. It was thought to maybe be bronchitis. He thinks it was just a cold though, and he does say he feels a, a lot better today, but he conceded that I've actually had some of my best races when I've not been feeling well. Maybe it should focus a little bit harder. He was cautiously optimistic that the car was going to be good, but he said, I've had that before here, and a car turned out not good, but this has not been one of his best tracks. Yeah, Kevin, that's one of those things. I've had great races when I've been deathly ill, as we see Hitchcliffe come around. Uh, Marco as well as he comes around his team and I've had great races when I've been really feeling under the weather and I, think, I don't know what it is I think maybe you just lower your expectation level and just kind of take things as it comes and usually things come around in the right way for you challenge for the lead Elio Castro Neves and fellow Brazilian Tony Canaan clear by two Ganassi now versus he's run the center down here at three and four and Tony will not give up this position easily I will guarantee you that he's going to want to lead as much as he can and this will be a good fight here Oh, you've been talking about conditions. What's happened now? Yeah, remember, Tony Kanaan qualified when there was a lot of truck rubber on the racetrack. That was the case at the start. But now the conditions are changing. They're starting to rub that rubber off. And then someone who qualified later, like Elio Castro Neves, like behind, the read that he got on the circuit is now going to be better for this time of the night. Very interesting how when the conditions change, you see one's going forward and one's going back. It's fascinating to see how the two Penske cars are making such good ground, Castro Neves and Will Power. And of course, the other guy that's really looking strong now, of course, is Hinchcliffe, who just go around uh, Marco. Now, Paul Sitter, Scott Dixon is back in fourth, some four seconds behind race leader Tony Canardis. New Garden puts a move on Sebastian Saavedra further back in the pack. Looks like Jack Hawksworth's in a little trouble there. Canard leads the way. As you may have seen at home in our non-stop commercial break, we are under our first full course yellow and there is some light rain falling on Iowa Speedway. So perhaps that severe weather has moved around us. However, just some gentle rain has arrived. Well, this is not what we wanted to see, but this might give Tony a chance to cool his tires down a little bit, take a little bit of a reset, uh, hold off the pressure from Castro Neves. But as we see, the rain is starting to come down a little harder. It might take a while. And the reason they have not opened the pits yet, this was discussed in the driver's meeting, was said, will you open the pits until we get a racetrack back? In other words, if you had pit stops now, you'd be racing, and it's very slippery down here. You would try to be gaining position. So IndyCar said, we will not open the pits until we know we're going back to racing. If it stays slippery, we may go red and bring you in so we avoid 
obviously some very slippery conditions and accidents on pit road. Yeah, and what could happen, Jan, is a guy could burn out and leaving the pits, lose it, and slide into another pit. So, a uh, good call by by race control to wait and wait on this one. Yeah, I fear looking out the booth window that there's some pretty heavy rain around. I mean, it has seemed to be pretty much skirted us so far. Hopefully, the worst of it will. A lot of people have come out to see this rain, and I'm sure that there'd have been a lot more. Quick reminder, tomorrow morning, stage nine of the Tour de France is here on NBCSN as the peloton pushes through the relentless and undulating terrain. The mountains are here. Coverage from 8 Eastern, primetime coverage, 8 p.m., all on NBCSN. And, of course, the big news of the Tour, uh, Chris Froome out after crashes on successive stages in stage four and five. And there's the red. So the rain getting heavier and heavier, and cars now coming down pit road. Pictures tell the story here in Iowa thought we may have got away with it and 39 laps completed of this 300 and remember 151 completed laps will constitute a race a completed race uh, that's just have to get one lap farther than the halfway mark to complete round 12 but at the moment we've just got 39 in the books and that's what it looks like at the moment and I have to say it did look a lot worse than that before remember we said that it was passing to the south and that continues to be the trend we're just getting that little fringe stuff on the top we are we are Iowa Speedway in Newton Iowa about 30 40 minutes east of Des Moines right just enough to bring things to a halt for a moment radar certainly didn't look too bad at all Nothing severe as of right now. In fact, and it's been a funny weekend, Paul, hasn't it? For enough. all of the teams, the drivers, the everybody flag, involved. Just yesterday was uh, throwing a curveball with uh, practice. They only got 13 minutes done in the initial practice. And then qualifying was pushed back to later last night to allow an actual decent practice session for drivers particularly who haven't competed here to get some good track timing. So everybody's had a little bit of a topsy-turvy weekend. It's been a long weekend for only a two-day event. I mean, yesterday was a marathon day with how long it took to get through practice and get through qualifying. It started in the morning and ended at night, and now it's going to continue today. These guys just, they want to go, but they're forced to be held here. So they're all ready to go, but we have to wait on Mother Nature. Well, of course, with the schedule these guys have got, uh, with another race coming up in just a week's time up in Canada, they've really got to get this race run tonight. They can't be uh, staying here tomorrow because they just don't have the time in the schedule they've set themselves. Ryan Hunter right there on screen, and he, at the time of the stoppage, was the biggest British mover Engineer of the race, race making up eight positions. His Andretti Autosport teammate James Hitchcliffe, the defending yeah. race winner, made up six. So the Andretti boys staying true to form. However, it's TK, Tony Canaan. He's won here before. Leader of a run to red. You're watching the Verizon IndyCar Series, brought to you by Verizon and IndyCar. Driving Technology 2014 Verizon IndyCar Series. Glad you could be with us here at Iowa Speedway for round 12 of the championship. Let's get an update from the ground. He's Kevin Lee. Well, Lee, I found one of our hosts. Craig Floss is the CEO of Iowa Corn, and the great thing about Iowa Corn is it's helping fuel IndyCars tonight. Absolutely. There's an 85% mixture of ethanol and a 15% mixture of gas in every one of these uh, IndyCars going around the track tonight. You uh, have been involved in this event for quite a while. What, what did you guys get out of uh, helping to sponsor an IndyCar race? We've actually been involved since 2007, the first year that Indy originally went 100% fuel grade ethanol. Now we're at E85, and if you own a flex fuel vehicle, you can fill your vehicle as a consumer with an E85 blend. So for us, it's all about using this as a platform to get our messages out about the green fuel, fastest green fuel on the planet. We love coming here. Great racing. Good to be here. Thank you, Great, Craig. Thank you. Over to Jan. And Kevin, of course, the man on the radio to Tony Kanaan is Barry Wanzer. We have the jet dryers out on the track, but this scenario was exactly what was described in the driver's meeting. Seems like a good call not to come onto a slippery pit road to make those stops. Yeah, you know, the rain's unfortunate for, uh, for us and the fans, but it looks like it was just a pop-up shower. They'll have the track dry pretty quick. Right now, we're pretty happy with how quick the target TNT energy drink car is right now. Tony's happy with the car, um, but we got a long way to go, 260 more laps, so... We need to uh, need to make sure the car is good in traffic. We're going to be in traffic all night, so uh, right now we're we're happy, but it's early. 
Now, he did say on the radio that the car feels light in traffic. Does that mean he has push or just needs more downforce? I think it's just a little bit, not, not push, it's probably a little loose in, in traffic. So um, Chris will make some changes to the car here on the pit stop that'll help him. And uh, we're going to be making some adjustments throughout the race for sure. All right, thank you, Barry. You heard him mention it's starting to dry. It's actually quite dry here on pit road, and they will let them pit. Before they go back to Green Kelly, they're going to let him come in and make those adjustments might be good news here for Scott Dixon. Mike Hall calls his race. He dropped a few positions there on those opening laps. What, how was his car? Car's good. Uh, you know, Tony's just energized with TNT. I think that's what that is all about. Uh, but the, the car's really good, well balanced. Um, I, think, I think, you know, everybody's watched Sc Scott race for a long time. He understands how to win races. And uh, that, that's what we're gonna try to do tonight. How tough is it to call strategy when the weather is so unpredictable as it is now? Um, I, I think you have to, to call the strategy like you're going to race 300 laps. I think anything short of that is kind of a concession to strategy. So that's what we're doing tonight. Uh, this shower is already, the pit lane's already dry. There's a small cell behind it. It might hit us, it might not. And after that, it looks pretty wide open. So I think we're going to go go the whole time. We sure hope so. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> and Mike Hull, who is the managing director of Chip Ganassi Racing, an experienced man. He's been around for so long in racing. And we have to say something very, very special. The gentleman on the right is a man who has been in sports broadcasting as a director for three and a half decades. It's our much beloved Gary Clem. Tonight is Gary's final IndyCar Series race being in the director's chair. He's decided to get off the throttle a little bit after so long in the business. He's up and maybe less motorsport directing and more golfing. And there is Gary alongside our uh, producers Rich O'Connor and uh, and Terry Lingner. Gary, thank you so much. He's, he is obsessed with the number 43 and the king. That was that, that little uh, picture we showed you there. Gary, for all of us here on the uh, on the team, it's an honor to be with you on your last night directing us, and thank you very much for so many years. I know you're not giving up the business totally, but thank you very much for all you have done for motorsports broadcasting over those decades. You've got so many friends in the business and uh, let's hope we have a great race to send you on your way and good luck when you tee it up. I think you told me you're going to tee it up every day next year. I hope you can and we thank you again for some great work. Gary Clem, renowned motorsport director and great man in sports broadcast. Thanks Gary, off to a break, back to Iowa, right up to the Juan Pablo Montoya will start from the pole position for the first time in an open wheel race since the year 2000. Everyone knew it was a matter of when, not if, he'd be back on top. Green flag waves and we're underway at Pocono. It's all about minimizing mistakes. Guys like Montoya, they're so experienced. Look at up front, it is Power and Montoya. The Penske teammates wheel to wheel. Montoya is working on Will Power. How about Montoya as he comes up? What a flawless run he's had today. He's really shown the patience of a guy that's been doing this a long time. This is the man that came back to IndyCar because he wanted to win these races. Juan Montoya is winning here at Pocono. Are you kidding? This guy is unbelievable. Coming back after 15 years and winning a race, he did a great job. I want to thank Roger for believing in me. You know, after you know how many years out of open wheel come back and he believed I could do it and here we are, it's awesome. That was just a week ago at Pocono, and Juan Pablo Montoya continues to be a global motorsports story. What a fantastic result. What a story that unfolds. The Indy 500 winner, IndyCar champion, off he goes to Formula One, wins seven Grand Prix, including the Monaco Grand Prix, more than 250 NASCAR Sprint Cup career races. Comes back, he sheds the pounds. Roger Penske believes in him, and Juan, after the win, said, I want to thank Roger and the team for believing me that I could do it. And Paul Tracy, you're a great story. David Hobbs, you're a great story. But this is a pretty amazing one, isn't it? Well, my son, Greg, raced against him in Barber Saab back at Sebring like 25 years ago <laughs> with Montoya just appeared on the scene. As a kid. As a kid. Yeah. And he said, <laughs> Greg said, hmm, maybe I'd better think of another line of employment. <laughs> he said, because there was this guy there called Montoya. He said, and he went by me like I had an anchor on the car. So he showed unbelievable promise very early on and as we see him talking with his crew guy you can see he's got a twinkle in his eye still and after this many years in racing to still have this type of enthusiasm 
He was a guy that I always enjoyed racing against. We raced each other really, really hard all the time, but it was always fair and uh, just a great race car driver. He spotted Kevin Lee coming in with the microphone. Kev, will he talk to you? Oh, sure he will. We're going to give it a try here. Uh, one, we, we hate to be talking to somebody during the middle of a race. That means it's raining or something else. Uh, before we talk about this race, did you really expect to be able to get a win this soon? And what does this do for the rest of the season moving forward? I think it's really exciting. I'll tell you the truth. Our, our PPG Chevy was really good last week. This week, we have a really good car yesterday. I know it's a little gritty in qualifying, and it cost us a lot. You know, I, I, I saved the car, but... I mean, track position here is really important. We've been passing people, but, you know, it, it's hard. you got to be patient. Sounds like from listening to you on the radio, it's a little bit of a handful right now, and you're struggling with the bumps? Yeah, a lot, actually. But, I mean, these guys are really good at Team Penske. They do a really good job for me. Uh, I get a little bit overexcited when, it's, when you're driving, you know. <laughs> Getting a little break like this when the car is not where you like, is, is that good just to have a chance to sit and explain exactly what you need in a calmer environment? Can they really help you in this pit stop that's coming up? Yeah, we're going to make a couple of changes there. Hopefully we can get it where I can start working with my tools in the car a little bit. You know, right now it's more, of, you know, make sure he doesn't come out of the corner backwards. All right, thank you, Juan. Good luck. We'll hopefully get back to racing very soon. Juan Pablo Montoya, Lee. And Kev, he's in a pretty positive mood, isn't he? Remember we told you earlier in the show, qualifying yesterday he said oh this is gonna hurt and this is what he was talking about Whoa. big moment there so very very lucky to catch that you can see it's the rear just steps out sideways right over that bump it's so easy here to end up in the wall backwards so uh, a little bit of a frustrating start to the night but you know, make some changes on the car I don't think it, this kind of stuff phases him as much as it used to be I think all his time in NASCAR and the races are so long but I think he just knows I got to work on my car and get it better and, and, and wait for it to come to me. He certainly didn't seem to be worried then at all. No, just, be, just be patient and it will come to you. And the wins have been coming to Michael Andretti here. His team has won five of the seven years, Jan, trying to win five in a row. They have, Lee, and he saw Kevin Lee going up and down doing interviews. He said, Jan, can you go up to Ryan's car and give him about a half a turn of front wing? <laughs> it seems like Ryan has had some push, but you're a big mover right now. Yeah, so far he's going pretty good, you know, he's, uh, he's not real happy with the balance, but, uh, you know, we'll hopefully we'll fix it in this pit stop when we, get, when we come in, but, uh, you yeah, know, so far so good. You've been looking at the track conditions and you keep talking to your crew. You want to run now. Yeah, I'm so frustrated. We're just wasting time waiting for the next, uh, you know, storm to come. So it's like, I don't know, the track's fine. I don't know why we're not running right now. Yeah, well, I have a feeling if, the, if he was driving, he'd be out there. <laughs> Kelly? Rob Edwards calls the, uh, calls the race for Simon Pagano, who's third in the points. He started 11th. He's still in 11th. Is everything status quo? What's he saying about the car? Yeah, I think really Simon was just, you know, getting a feel of the car and uh, getting settled in. Uh, it's fairly typical for us on an oval. We tend to, like, get settled in the early part of the race and then move forward in the second half. So, um, yeah, I think, as I say, everything's fine so far. He's already got a couple wins on road courses. How anxious are you for this Frenchman to get a win on an oval? Uh, you know, we, I think it's going to happen one day, and uh, we hope it will be tonight. You know, we just keep doing the same things every week, and uh, I'm sure it's going to come. You said you've been checking the radar, and you have no idea what's going to happen. None of us really do, but what does that do for you mentally as you're trying to come up with a game plan? Uh, I think, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about it. We obviously had a lot of time this morning. Um, you know, there are some things you can plan for, some things you can't, and I think the important thing is to have a flexible strategy. Um, you know, it's hard because the, the radar looks clear and then suddenly something else will pop up. But um, as I say, we got a pretty flexible strategy. We'll hope it'll work out. Well, the track drawing efforts continue here in Iowa. We hope that they will get back to a couple caution laps before they make their stops and get back to green flag racing here. Well, she's dead, Joseph. Yeah, it's not we good. Have, we have to open. No, 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 on no. Come on, there's got to be something we can do. You're French. Yeah. You know cornfields? I've, I've been here before. Where the heck are we going, man? Right, we're going to the track. We should have driven a Honda. We wouldn't be in this position. That's right. Joseph. Sam! Where are you, my French little friend? 
American boy! Oh, it's Joseph. I lost my little buddy. What? Where'd you get that? A <laughs> couple of talented young guys having an enjoyable time here. And I think maybe we should put the little disclaimer in there. We didn't make that. The teams did. So, anyway, a little bit of fun before the serious stuff began. There is Joseph Newgarden. And at the moment, the man from Nashville, Tennessee, is in 16th place as we wait for things to get back rolling after a brief rain shower came over at the Iowa Speedway here. Simon Pagano. He is within 44 points of the lead of this championship and really feels he's got a chance. They say that Iowa Speedway races a little bit like a road course, so maybe Pagano it could be his night. He's just outside the top 10 in 11th. We've got some very pleasing news to tell you, and it is in relation to one of the gentlemen sitting here in our NBCSN IndyCar booth. On the left there, Paul Tracy, our PT, will be inducted into the Canadian Motorsports Hall of Fame later this year in September alongside Nigel Mansell. All the details are there on your screen, but Paul, first and foremost, congratulations, mate. That's quite the honor. Well, thank you. I never thought uh, that those th that day would come. Uh, when I started my career, I thought it'd be, I'd be lucky just to win one race, let alone 31 and, and win a championship. And to be inducted with Nigel Mansell, who was one of my heroes growing up, and I had the great opportunity to race wheel to wheel with him and 2003 is just a thrill. Pretty cool, Hobo, isn't it? It's very cool. Yes, it's uh, very cool for both of them. Uh, and uh, you're certainly in great company there, Nigel Mansell, winning those two championships back to back. Another man who's in great company is Jan Bikas. He's with the captain, Roger Penske. Absolutely, and things are going well for Elio Castro Neves. He's moving in. Looks like he had the faster car as he pleased with it. Well, I think uh, so far so good. Obviously, this is a 300 lap race, so we need to see a longer run on tires. But Elio felt the car was good. We're not going to make any changes when we come in to make this stop. So it's uh, got to be careful here tonight. Things come up fast, and the track will change. It gets cooler. Hopefully, this rain will go away. Now, one of your former drivers just made the Canadian Hall of Fame. How about that one? Who was that? <laughs> That'd be that guy up in the booth, Paul Tracy. Oh, my gosh. He was one of the best. You know that? He and I used to get in a fist fight all the time, but when he was on it, he was on it. <laughs> He also told us the only thing he was allowed to say on the radio is 10-4. That's right. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Roger. PT, what was it like driving for the captain? Well, I think times have changed a little bit. There wasn't any uh, horsing around that went on like last week at Pocono is there, uh, when I was around. But, uh, you know, you know, Roger gave me the greatest opportunity of my career to be on the Marlboro Team Penske and to, to have an opportunity to race for him uh, with... The level that he operates at is just, it's the highest of the highest. So He's lighting up great in his old age too, isn't he? Well, you said horsing around. Somebody who wasn't horsing around last weekend was Tim Sindrick when he told Will Power, concentrate, get your head in the game and get back out there and get on with it. Kevin, what's his mood like this weekend? Well, Will Power, his driver, has moved up a few spots. How is the car so far for Will? Yeah, so far, it's pretty good. It started out pretty tight and had a lot of understeer there at the beginning. And I, I think, you know, as we adjusted the car, it was coming back to him. And obviously, he's moving up a few spots. So, not bad. After we sit for a little while and just a little bit of rain, never lost the track at all. But what kind of impact does that have, if any, of when you go back out? Well, when you have a good car, you want it to stay green for a while. So, you know, from our perspective, if we felt like the field was coming back to us, um, now everybody's going to reset here a little bit. Um, so, I guess we would rather it stay green for a little while longer. But, um, Everybody's kind of in a fuel window here, and obviously we're trying to make it at least halfway, if not all the way. Last week was obviously a great week at Pocono, but it was also an interesting week. What kind of conversations did you have in the week about racing with teammates? Right, I think as soon as you let the emotion subside, everything sorts itself out. You know, I think we're in a good place. I think Will know he understands exactly, you know, what the issues were. And, uh, you know, from our end, I think we're just racing business as usual. I think that, um, you know, when you've got guys racing that hard, you want them to race hard. You want them to race clean. You want them to race hard. And uh, I think we understand all that. And obviously, after Will had a chance to digest it, I think he'd agree with you totally. Team Prinsky president, it's Tim Sindrick. Kelly? Jimmy Vassar here on the box for uh, Sebastian Bourdais. His qualifying efforts seemed to kind of come out of nowhere. He was sixth. He's fallen back a few spots. What's he saying on the radio? Uh, just the car is uh, really moving up the track, push loose. Uh, we think maybe we are a little shy on left side tire pressures. That could be an effect on that. So we're going to try to get the pressures right. And, uh, you know, he's got to work his tools. So it's a tough track here. And, um, you know, he's got to fight all night. Yeah, it seems like there's never a moment's rest. And now, especially for your crew, we're down here closer to pit in. All the cars right now are stopped at pit out. And that could present a challenge as they run a couple caution laps before you guys get a pit. 
Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure that, uh, that IndyCar is going to make sure that everybody's back in their boxes before they open the pit lane. They don't need a bunch of, uh, bunch of guys running down the middle of the pit lane. And really the issue being that they've got their starters and their tug carts down there. They certainly want to get them back to their pit stalls here before they make that pit stop in case they have an issue here on pit road. They're going to need that equipment. Thank you. And Jimmy being a little bit humble there because in relation to Sebastian Bourdais fine qualifying yesterday, we learned just this afternoon, gents, didn't we, that it was Jimmy Vassa himself who said to Sebastian, trust the car, trust you've got new tires on it, keep your foot flat to the floor and hang on, it's two laps. And you got to work your tools, like you said. And when they say work your tools in these cars, uh, they have a front and rear anti-roll bar that they have adjusters that can adjust them back and forth to change the balance from front to rear. They also have a weight jacker in the car that moves weight in the car from left to right or right to left. So there is a lot of adjustments on the road that you don't have on the road course. So they'll be constantly reminding these guys if their handling goes away, use your tools, use your tools. Drivers and teams, restart your engines, please. What a great sound. What a great sound. Let's refire those engines. Let's go back to racing. 39 laps in of this 300 lap race. Weather seems as though it's going to be a threat this entire night. So if we can make it to lap 151, that'll be round 12 of the Verizon IndyCar series done. I'm kind of with Michael, what he said earlier on. Uh, he thinks they should have been racing 10 minutes ago, but I think they should have been because of the weather. It's very cloudy and it's very iffy looking. That radar looked pretty good, but obviously these pop-up shards in the Midwest here really come out of nowhere. And then conversely, last night when the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series was running here, there were massive thunderstorms predicted for around 6, 6.30, nothing and nothing happened, the sun was yeah. out. So it's been, uh, it's been somewhat questionable and a little bit unpredictable as well, but positive signs here with cars rolling at Iowa Speedway. Now, just to give you a snapshot of this championship, through the 11 races thus far, Will Power was the championship leader right through to the Indianapolis 500. Of course, Ryan Hunt and Ray won that and blew out to a 40-point lead. Things started to go off the rails then for RHR, and he lost his 40-point lead, and Will Power took over the lead of the championship, all up until last week in Pocono when a 39-point lead was extinguished and we now have a tie for the championship. Ryan Hunter Ray will go to the end of his life wondering about that terrible mistake he made in Long Beach when he absolutely had that race so locked up. Had a momentary, mo momentary moment of panic uh, when he lost the lead under the pit stop cycle and then tried that unbelievable move. Well, he, he did make a bad move there, and acknowledged that bad move, but he backed it up with an Indy 500 win. So yeah. certainly did. <laughs> so that, that certainly a, made up for it. That was a heck of a win. We watched all that after Monte Carlo Grand Prix. So let's go, let's go through the list for you. You've got Tony Kanaan and his first year with the Ganassi organization winless. He's got business at hand. Second is Elio Castro Neves, who is tied for the lead of this championship. Business on his books. Ryan Briscoe returning to the Ganassi organization this year. Winless. He wants to make amends. He got his first top five last weekend in Pocono. Behind him, his Ganassi teammate and defending series champion Scott Dixon. Winless this year. There's some guys in the front where there is a lot at stake, Paul, in this race. Well, as we see them lapping around, they're going to pit this lap. The guys are warming open. their tires, trying to, trying to make sure they can get effectively in and out of their box. Nice. Uh, you don't want to make a mistake with the weather it's here and lose a bunch of positions. So as we see Tony, he's bringing it to pit road, John. Yes, and the two leaders will be pitting together. Elio Castro Nevis will have to swing around Tony Kanaan, but they're next to each other on pit road. Ryan Briscoe, a few positions behind. This is going to be so tight because Five, everyone is four, taking opportunity three, here. Kanaan comes to a stop first. Castro Nevis swings around. Very tight quarters down here. Watching Kanan, they take some wing out of him for Castro Nevis. Go, 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 he gets go. away. Oh, and Kanan is right on him. He's trying to make a move. Some great pit stops up and down pit road. Castro Nevis is going to win the race off pit road. And that was mano a mano, the two we best teams him, in the we series. And you see how happy Roger is. That was chip against Roger in the pit lane, and Roger won that. It was good for Will Power as well because he jumped up. It was very productive work from the Penske squad, and Scott Dixon has also gained a spot there as well, so he moved up. So nice work there from those guys, and let's take a look at just how close this was as they were able to race each other off pit road. 
This is Montoya coming in. Power is already there. There goes Castro Neves to the right. Canaan around the outside. I'll tell you what, Dixon was right there too. He yep. almost beat the pair of them as well. So he jumped a couple spots as well. Half a car length in that. Power jumps seventh to fourth. There's Dixon. He wasn't that far out of it either. So Briscoe lost a spot. There it is. That's just how close it was. And Ed Carpenter in the mix as he was in the opening stanza of that race. This is what it looked like for Tony Canaan. Can't get any tighter than Castro Neves coming in behind the back of the outside front tire changer. And just making that slight wing adjustment could have cost him that little, that yeah. half a second difference of beating Castro Neves out of the pits. And that's all it takes is a blink of an eye. And of course, it may make a lot of difference to his uh, speed on the track. Because his laps just unwind at the most staggering rate. 17 seconds per lap. Incredible, isn't it? And yesterday in qualifying, we saw speeds of 186 miles per hour on this 7 eighths of a mile track. Jan? When you saw those replays of the pit stops, it was really the pressure on the crews because they didn't need all the fuel. Typically, if you're a tire changer, you wait on the fuel and you don't necessarily have to rush it. That was all like a real pit stop competition. And so the Penske crew definitely delivered. So in behind these guys, the order is Briscoe 5, Carpenter 6, Hinchcliffe 7, Hunter Ray 8, Pagano 9, Andretti 10, Munoz Bourdais, who has dropped six spots from his starting position. Then Montoya, who gained plenty through that as well. So he's up to 13th, Newgarden 14th, Saavedra in 15th. Ray Hall dropped to several positions on that pit stop cycle, and Charlie Kimball down in 18th position. Takuma Sato down there in 19, not where you sort of used to see him. Lights out at the line. Again, Luna is doing a tremendous, tremendous job up in the left spot. I'm surprised that some of the guys in the back took that stop and wouldn't try to cycle to the front, like Montoya, and maybe wait for another yellow. But they all took it, other than Hawksworth, who came in after uh, because he was a lap one down. One to go here. We're going to go next two, time by. Two, one, two, sorry. One, two, one, two. One, two. Top five positions filled by either Ganassi or Penske cars. We just got word that the radar is looking a whole lot better. There's Justin Wilson for Dale Coyne in the Boy Scouts They're going green this time by. They've Next called green this time by. We're ready to go. We will be green for we. Remember the story earlier this year in Houston where strategy and topping off and playing the fuel game really paid for Dale Coyne's no team. You're ready. Fuentes, ready to go back racing here in Iowa. It's the Iowa Corps 300 and after a 26 minute red flag, we're racing again. And look at James Hughes, please, there's a crash. A lotion at Sato. Mikhail Aloshin and Takuma Sato have collided in spectacular fashion. You okay, Mikhail? That's a big, big impact. To be ready for Toronto next week with only one day to turn the cars over. The cars are very heavy. Yeah. 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 Oh, dear. That one's pretty damaged as well. The nose, you don't like to see when the nose is pushed in. That means you hit head on in the wall. Hurt your feet. Slamming the pedals. He lost it. The lotion lost it. Took Sato with him. Just pushed Sato head on right now. Well, Sato doesn't have the best of luck. Charlie Kimball's view. Watch for a lotion to go down way low and lose it. Yeah, he just got, he got outside, below, outside, the, below got the yellow run. line. Go low, go low. Went go below low. the yellow line on the apron with cold tires, and then the rear stepped out and came up the track and took Sato with him. So definitely a mistake. That's the first mistake that we've seen a lotion make this year on ovals. He's been fantastic, but that was just a, a classic rookie mistake. Kings are there, very lucky. A lotion has been suffering some illness this weekend. There it is from a different angle. That's good taste for clearing up that AJ Foyt. He's seen his driver in too many scraps. Well, he's also had a, had a scrap with the lotion, so this is twice now in the span of a few weeks, so he probably won't be very happy. And if AJ is not happy, a lotion should be running through those cornfields. Let's check in with Jan Vikas. 
And you've talked about, Paul, you mentioned in particular a rookie mistake for Mikhail Aloshin, but there may be more to the story. On that last pit stop, they added three, yes, three turns of front wing. Everyone else we're talking half turn, one turn. They added three turns of front wing. And you know, Paul, if you go back out on cold tires and all of a sudden it sticks to front like that, it may have just been way more responsive than he was expecting. Absolutely, Jan. As we see Aloshin climb into the ambulance truck, he's holding his wrist. Uh, might have had his hands on the steering wheel when he hit the wall with, with uh, Sato. And, you know, there's just been a rash of wrist injuries lately with, the, with these cars. So, well, obviously, you're supposed to let go of the wheel, but the problem is, of course, you fight it to the last minute. Let's hear from AJ Ford. He's with Kevin. AJ, you guys need a break. There was nothing Takuma could do there. Well, you know, just like I said in Texas, all you're getting is a bunch of damn idiots out there anymore. I don't know what the hell they're trying to prove on a start line. It's ridiculous. And, I think the officials need to come down on some of this crap because uh, we've been the victim since a couple of times. It, it's not racing no more. It's who can survive the crash. Another DNF, unfortunately, for Takuma Sato, and it has been a rough go this season. Have you ever gotten uh, mad? Has AJ ever gotten mad at you, Hawks? Luckily, no. <laughs> I didn't. I only raced against him once or twice in my career, so he retired right after I started. But uh, he is not happy with uh, the other red, white, blue car. That's for sure. And no. as they do at each and every event, the ABC Supply Company has hundreds and hundreds of guests here. That is not what they came to see. And we were talking about this just a few moments ago. This is what happened a few weeks ago when Takuma Sato was in a very prominent position, vying for a top spot in this race. He and Aloshin come together again. And as you saw that steering wheel snap around on Sato in the car, he also had a sore wrist after that. So uh, in the span of two weeks, these guys have gotten together twice. So understandably, AJ's frustrated and a little bit miffed. Here it is from the Charlie Kimball viewpoint, the collision of Mikhail Aloshin for the SMP Racing Squad goes low and loses it. And Sato, the innocent bystander. Waiting to go back to green here at Iowa Speedway in the Iowa Corn Indy 300. Before we do, I want to bring you some NASCAR America news and notes to bring you up to speed. And Kyle Busch and Jimmy Johnson will start on the front row for tomorrow's Sprint Cup race. Brad Keselowski driving for the captain did very well and earns career win number 29 in the Nationwide Series race today in New Hampshire. And here last night, Eric Jones won the Camping World Truck Series. To finish off a NASCAR point, we want to wish our friends at TNT, NASCAR on TNT, of course, because we have uh, Wally Dallin back, uh, Marty Snyder, Chris Neville, and the whole gang there. And uh, TNT's bringing their NASCAR commitments to a close, and they have their final race tomorrow. So we want to wish all the boys and all of our friends at TNT all the best for their final Run. Uh, Hobo, did I see you here the other day? You did. You saw me jumping down on that uh, health food. A bit, a bit of a health food. And, that thing. and the outcome was? Well, I writhed around a bit for a few hours. Oh, that was, oh look at that. Full size bun on top. Perfect. Sandwich. <laughs> Allegedly, it's iconic here at Iowa Speedway. <laughs> Kevin? One thing to keep in mind as we uh, get back to the racing, hopefully soon, is that the numbers are going to change a little bit for fuel strategy in this stint because we know that you get better fuel mileage running under caution, but they're not running the full lap right now. So I heard uh, some radio communication that we're going to be guessing a little bit more on the number as they roll through pit lane here during this stint. So the weather is on our side very much now after there was a tornado watch earlier. We got that brief shower and we have been able to get racing underway again. However, oh, and look, that radar looks a whole lot more user friendly. And the sun's coming out behind us. We're getting sunset now. So hopefully it's going to uh, look at that beautiful sunset now. A lot different than it was an hour ago. Get this accident cleaned up and hopefully these guys can get going again and wow look at that how is how is it to live in the united states oh, that is a spectacular view isn't it just gorgeous 
here in the heartland. IndyCar in the heartland, and this is the eighth year for the Verizon IndyCar Series at Iowa Speedway, and there's been some tremendous history created here on this short but extremely fast track. Waiting to go back to green after the cleanup after a collision between Mikhail Aloshan and Takuma Sato. You can see Sato's car there on the back of the rescue vehicle. And pits are open, and Montoya and Hawksworth have decided to come. Kelly? The last time through that car, Hawksworth did not get any fuel into his car because the fuel nozzle broke, so they decided to bring him in and top him off this time. They obviously pull it, pull put it. in a, a backup go, go, go. part and now have fuel. And now we see Juan Pablo Montoya getting pushed out. Charlie Kimball also came in. You talked about that debris he ran over. They said they didn't see anything that showed he had any damage, but they brought him in to top him off and check for damage from running over debris in that crash. They didn't see anything. It was a quick one for Kimball. There is Charlie. We do have to uh, make a note on uh, Jack Hawksworth, if you weren't with us during our practice and qualifying coverage. A big crash last weekend at Pocono. He suffered a myo myocardial contusion, basically bruising of the heart. He did spend one night in hospital, the 23-year-old Englishman, and this is what it looked like for him. Pretty scary moment at high speeds at the Tricky Triangle. Well, it's incredibly quick at Pocono. You're averaging 220 miles an hour. David, and these cars now are so much safer than the days that you used to race. An accident like that would be fatal in your day. Uh, completely. I mean, very good chance of either fatality or very badly injured. But these cars are so strong structurally now and integrally that, uh, that the driver sits in really in a safe compartment with a head and neck restraint. Uh, you know, you really are almost bulletproof. Well, speaking of crashes, Takuma Sato was involved in one. How is he, Kev? He says he's fine and we want to see the incident because he hasn't really seen it, but we've seen it and tell you there's nothing you can do, right? <laughs> no. I mean, I was side by side with Kimball and, and um, uh, after the, taking the green flag, and, and, um, all I saw was uh, just uh, white smokes and I couldn't really see anything. And, um, Really unfortunate in the bad luck is keep on going and hopefully this weekend was uh, turning over but maybe we have to wait another week. AJ was pretty pointed when we talked to him about the incident. It's the same guy that crashed you a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, but this case is a completely different scenario. So uh, I wish I wish he's okay. I mean, he, he seems to be a little hit the hand pretty hard, but hopefully he's okay. All right, we'll wait for a report of Mikhail Lotion. Thank you. Very classy for Takuma Sato. He made a mistake here tonight. Yeah. Very understanding as we're getting ready to go back racing here at Iowa Speedway. All green this time. Yes, we are. Cool, I wouldn't have been able to see him at all because he no. was behind Kimball's car, so he wouldn't have seen the ocean coming at all. Very understanding. Start to pack up now as Castro Mendes slows the field down. He went a little quicker as the pace car peeled off. Gets some heat in the tires and you see the sun. The crowd is clapping. They're ready for a race. The first time we've green, seen green, green, green. lead in this race. He got that position on the pit stop rotation. Let's see what Kanan can do. Can he go with his old friend? He goes to the inside He's on Elio. Forward. He opened up the line on the entry. Uh, Elio took the high line, and Tony outside, does outside. not want to give up that lead at all. He knows that he had a good car. He was pumped after qualifying yesterday, devastated after Pocono last weekend, where he saw a win evaporate. Go away from him. Dixon running three. Bis Briscoe, his Ganassi teammate running four. Power is under pressure from Ed Carpenter.
versus Pagano and Hinchcliffe. Check this out. Eight, the battle for eight. And Pagano moves on the inside of the Still Andrew there. the Autosport man. Hinch comes back. Ooh, that was close. They almost touched the wheels that coming off the corner. Close. But you can see the momentum that the high line has when you come off the corner. You just have a little bit more RPM, a little bit more top speed, and you're able to pull on the guy coming off. As Pagano continues to work the bottom, but as you see as they come off, on the top end here, Hinchcliffe just has enough to hold him, but I think Pagano might get him on the slide. Pagano's got that inside line. He's, he oh, seems to be quick around there, but back on but the inside. But quick around the top of the track. This is real wheel-to-wheel -wheel stuff. Defending race winner on the high line, James Hinchcliffe, relentless. He's not going to give up this position. The fight for eighth continues. Castro Neves is in the lead by just a tenth of a second over Tony Kennard. This is a great fight. Tony Kanan is still working over his Brazilian countryman, Castro Neves. He really desperately wants to get by. I think we're going to go full distance tonight, so maybe the urgency isn't as great right now, but uh, after leading at Pocono so many laps, he just wants to get back out there and control the race. Elio Castro Neves said in response to leading this championship in a tie with Will Power, you know what? There's a long way to go in this 24 series. I've been in this position before and a lot closer to the last round of the season. I'm not getting too excited Fair just yet. We've got some close calls to show you. Let's just go back a couple of laps with he and Ryan hunter Ray, his teammate. There's RHR on the high line. Whoa. Wow. That's a thread the needle. And then this fight with Simon Pagano that went on lap after lap after lap. That is close. Teammates going at it here, Ryan Briscoe, Scott Dixon. The NTT data entry on the low line. And Briscoe said earlier in the line, earlier in the show, with Robin Miller, I'm going to give it a go tonight. I feel we're getting better as a team, race after race. And that was highlighted with his best result of the year. Meanwhile, for the lead of the race, look at this. Can I on the inside of Elio Castro Neves? Just looked like I didn't see the complete action on that, but maybe he used Vortez uh, as a pick to get a run on uh, yeah. Castro Neves and just time the traffic perfectly, which is what you're going to have to do as they're already lapping guys again. So they're going to be in traffic a lot of the night. So if you can use the traffic as a pick, it's a, as yeah, you can see right there, he just, there was the pick and Tony got the run on him and he killed Castro Neves' momentum. Now he's got a block behind the other car. There's nowhere for Castro Neves to go. Jack Hawksworth and Carlos Huertes, the two cars not on the lead lap. And there have been two retirements from this race. Takuma Sato, we've already heard from. The other man, Mikhail Aloshan. Kevin? And Mikhail had finished in the top seven and four of the last five, including a runner-up at Houston first. How's your wrist? You got a nice bag on. Well, my wrist is fine. Uh, it's uh, hurting a bit, but uh, it's nothing serious. It doesn't look so. All right, tell us what happened when you when you lost the car. Well, obviously, I just did a mistake on restart. Uh, I was trying to push on Savidra, and uh, I think I was a bit too aggressive on the exit of the corner. And, uh, you know, the rear just went very fast, uh, and I couldn't do anything, really. It's, it was no time to react. And then I think uh, Takuma just uh, crashed into me because it was also hard to react, you know. There is so plenty of speed here, so... I'm sorry for my team uh, because we actually could uh, bring up a good result this race. Okay, thank you, Mikhail. We'll see you in Toronto next week. A lot of work to be done by the SMP Racing side of the Schmidt Hamilton Peterson Racing Organization. Ganassi teammates still working on here. each other. Briscoe and Dixon right side by side for another lap with Will Power hunting in the background for fifth. Up front, Kanan's got about half a second over Elio Castro Neves. Look at Ryan Hunter Ray. Hunter Ray, he's slicing through the field. He's come up from the back of the field now, working the high side on power. He'll try to use power as a, or Dixon as a pick here if he can get a run around the outside and get a good exit. We are hearing reports from the track that Juan Pablo Montoya is suffering some rear wing issues similar there it is right there to what ryan hunter ray experienced yesterday in the opening session of practice same side look up ahead and 
and that wow. rear wing end plate just delaminates exactly the same as what happened to Ryan Hunter Ray yesterday. And that'll take a lot of downforce off the rear end of the car. And if he's looking a bit tail happy, uh, so he your that there. That's going to be bad. Castro Nevis working on Tony. The reason I think this is happening, Dave, we talked about it in practice. You know, these are the road course uh, front and rear wings, and you only see sustained speeds. Uh, on a road course of maybe 185, 190 miles an hour for a fraction of a second. Uh, they're averaging 185 yeah. miles an hour. So there's tremendous pressure on these wing end plates and they're just breaking them apart. And of course it's a rough surface, so that shakes them around as well. So yeah, they, they, that's the second one. Closing up on the apart. bottom, trying to get underneath and you there. That You're happens clear. to Juan Pablo Montoya when he is the biggest mover in the field, making up nine positions to be in the top 10 as he is part of his rear wing end plate sitting there on the inside line of the track. Canaan Yalita here in Iowa as we approach third race distance. IndyCar 2014, but he stands a chance of being the champion at the end of this year. So, some pretty heated stuff on pit lane, not just with the Penske team out on track as well, on board Hinchcliffe. Check this out. Whoa! That's the that you're Clear. ever going to thread the needle there. That was really close. I mean, one more inch, and they would have both been at the wall together. If you think James Hinchcliffe wants to win this race tonight, you are right. He wants to defend that win. Yeah, you've got to have eyes in the back of your head out here as well. It's such a short lap, it's 17 seconds, averaging 186 miles an hour. Well, There's not really much that Ed could do. I mean, I'm sure he was pushing up the track and understeering, and then when James decided to stick it in between us, really, there's not anything that Ed can do. That's right, Paul. And in fact, he had called in earlier that he had a massive push, and he knew that he was coming. He tried to keep it down, but the car was washing up the track. Thankfully, he held it up enough where there wasn't contact. And now he's been on pit road and had the change that he wanted. I've been remiss to let you know the reason for the third caution. It was, of course, because of Montoya's debris. We showed you going to the brake. Uh, the caution came out just as we went to brake. It was just uh, that part of that rear wing end plate down on the inside line of the track. What a glorious evening now, hey, here at Iowa Speedway. After some really serious weather concerns earlier, we have got a beautiful night to do this race in its entirety as we approach the 100 lap mark, one third race distance. What's going to happen yellow, in the rest? Yellow, 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 yellow. And they're waving this start off. Whatever problem Montoya had in the pit was cost him a lap. He's lost a lap, so that might be why he was aggravated as we see Sebastian Bourdais having a problem getting going. Looks like he's got it going now, but I don't know what was happening there. He just didn't come up to speed off at the pace car speed. Going now, and we 
before that happened, he was in 17th position, one place ahead of Juan Pablo Montoya, who started 19th, came up to 10th. Now Montoya's back down to 17th place. Let's see green this time by at Iowa Speedway. No, we don't. Yellow, 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 yellow. Again. Race control not quite happy with the lineup or the pack up. They want the closer. So fair call. Pace car speed here for the time being. Everybody else, let's close up the gap. Pace car speed, car set. Well read, Lee. Pace car speed, which is 80 miles per hour. And that was the instruction given to car 10, Tony Kanaan in the TNT Ganassi entry. Pretty big gap. Green, 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 green. Green, 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 on Castor Neves and slices down the inside, but Tony really got that restart. I don't know what he did. What uh, Castor Neves was thinking there. Maybe he didn't think it was going I think green he, that time. Exactly. I think he thought it may have been waved off again. And Will Power pounced. The two guys who are tied at the lead of this championship are you racing see. each other on track again. Castor Neves comes back on his teammate. I just, I just don't think he was ready for that restart. Maybe he thought it was going to go another lap. Side by side, the two guys who are side by side in the championship. Elio on the inside, Will on the high side. Keep in mind what happened at Pocono last week when Power was penalized for blocking and he gave both of his teammates a hard run. He's learned from that, but he said, you know what, that's just how I race. I'm used to being an aggressive racer. I'm racing for the win, and if you're not racing for the win, there's no point as Ed Carpenter comes on the outside of Scott Dixon. Ed yeah, Carpenter made a good run since the green flag did come out. Watching Scott here, he's getting worked over by Ed. Uh, he's had a little bit more of a struggle in terms of handling tonight compared to his teammate. Uh, he's been having to fight the whole time with somebody every single lap. So yeah. he was uh, on the pole. He has yeah. such run 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 a fast car. Qualifying lap record here. So we'll hear from, hear from Jan. And Ed Carpenter, you saw how he picked up that speed on Scott Dixon. Paul, that was one turn of front wing. That's all he did on that previous pit stop, and now he's on the go pedal. Here comes power. Ryan Briscoe in the NTT data entry, feeling strong. Of course, that, that finish last week at Pocono jumped him from 13th to 9th in the standing, so if he has a really good finish here in, say, the top three, that's really going to help. Well, he's getting far behind him. the championship. The second time he's done that. Sounds like Ed is not happy with Will changing his line in the middle of the corner. He wants to get a run on the bottom side, and it seems like he feels that Will is uh, cutting the air off of him. So he's saying he needs to pick a lane and stay in it, but you got to find a way around the guy in front of you. He, he's in control of where, where he wants to go. Yeah. We heard that massive throttle modulation aboard the fuzzy Chevrolet. Now. Carpenter starts to regain that ground on Will Power. Kanan leads by less than three tenths of a second. Briscoe's third. You're looking at Power in fourth. There's the fight for the, the top spot. The two Brazilians going at it. Old friends came into IndyCar at the same time, raced Indy Lights for Tasman Motorsports at the same time, have known each other and know each other's racing style so well. Bit, trying to get underneath you, but you're still clear. It seems like Kanan's car is really, really good right off the start. And as the run goes on, Castro Neves' car seems to get better. So Castro Neves has got a really solid car for a long run as he seems to progress on, on Kanan as, as they get about 10 laps into the run. Sebastian Saavedra in the KB AFS entry, that red and yellow car. He sits eighth at the moment, riding aboard Simon Pagano in ninth. And I'd say that's a pretty strong run from Saavedra. Very strong. Simon Pagano hit the rev limiter at the end of the front straightaway. Uh, these two are still going at it, power, power and edge. So a uh, little bit sideways coming off the corner as, as Will chopped across the front of him. He got uh, Ed a little sideways coming off the corner. And you can see how thick the air is. Those baby oh, yeah, trails coming off the, the rear wing. The contrails coming off the rear wing uh, from the humidity. A lot hotter than it was yesterday, so the speeds are high. You see that white trail coming off the back wing, which is really cool looking. Let's show you what that looked like from Ed Carpenter's view. Inside power, draws alongside, and gets by the Verizon Outside. entry, or does he? Still there, still there. Yeah, maybe Ed's car's not working quite so well on that lower line. Whereas Will Power's car seems to be working high, pretty well high, as both these guys do. 
so now he's coming down. He's tried this trick three or four times to get underneath him, but doesn't seem to pull it off. That's what's great about this track. It's just there's so many different lines that you can take. You see Tony runs the high side. Castro Nevis kind of runs the middle. And it's just a seesaw. A guy will pull up and then pull back, and it's just really great racing here. Racing lap 115 of 300 here at Iowa Speedway. It's Ganassi, it's Penske. It's Ganassi, it's Penske. And that second Pen Pen Penske entry is the Verizon car of Will Power. Let's listen to what he had to say about last weekend and the rest of the season. Yeah, yeah, so what happened at Pocono was just me in the moment, in the heat of the battle of wanting to win. And, and that's, that's how I've been racing all season. You know, some people don't like it, but that's honestly, you know, when you stop going for that, why bother? Why bother racing? When you stop going for, for racing for wins, um, you know, it's just, I just feel that, that you're out there to do a job and your job is to win. Well, I completely agree with you, Will. I, I drove like that in my whole career. I drove with my heart on my sleeve. We all want to see you be successful. You're having a great night tonight, so let's keep it going. The two of you had quite a few appointments with race control too, though, didn't you? <laughs> mine, were, mine were for different reasons, though. <laughs> I was usually shunting another guy off the track. <laughs> James Hinchcliffe runs seventh in the United Fiber and Data entry, the defending race winner. Can he go back to back and give Andretti five in a row? It's all Ganassi and Penske at the moment. Through the field, and we start with Young. And Tony Kanaan is obviously having a great night, and you noted that it seemed like he was dropping back into the clutches of Elio Castro Neves. I checked with the team. They say, no, we think that we're just a little faster in one and two, but here in three and four, we think that Castro Neves is faster. Now, of course, for Elio Castro Neves, they have flip flopped during pit stops. It was traffic that allowed Tony Kanaan to get by. He's hoping now that he'll have traffic and help him to move forward. Now, for Ryan Briscoe, he has had a fantastic night going. He obviously has the opportunity. He's been happy on the radio, hasn't asked for any changes. Kevin? Will Power's having a good run so far, starting ninth to fourth. He wasn't sure what he had. He said, I'd be pretty happy for the top five. He's had not had great success here at Iowa before. He's not really totally figured out this type of track yet, but he's getting better. And for Ed Carpenter, we saw that he had a big push earlier, but he got one turn of front wing on the last stop, and he is much, much happier. He's got to work through the lap traffic there of Hawksworth, but happier with the car. Still wants more front. Sent is still pushing, Kelly. Remember, Scott Dixon started on pole. He's back to sixth position. He was a little bit hesitant to cel celebrate that pole. As you saw, Bourdais there slowing on pit lane. But Dixon said getting that pole was just a start. This team needs a win. He hasn't said much on the radio, though he did say that he was a little bit free. Now behind him, look at this. Sebastian Saavedra, who started 17, has gone up 10 positions. This is his 50th career start. He won here in Iowa in an Indies Lights race, and this guy's on fire. The radio calls have been, you own these guys. Go get them. Kevin. Kelly James Hensler picked up spots quickly starting 14th. They receive him in the blue white United Fiber and Data Car getting up to as high as six, running an eighth right now. Also keeping an eye on the business side of things. He is a sort of a free agent. The team has an option on the contract, but he and Michael Andretti expect to get something done soon. It sounds optimistic, Jan. Of course, this is the time of year when people talk about what might happen next year. Ninth place, Simon Pagino, a lot of talk in the paddock. Maybe he will be driving for Andretti Autosport in the future tonight. He's having some trouble keeping high line and there are times that's where you definitely need to be. Ryan Hunter Ray has been moving forward but he's also been having a vibration. He called it and said that that is something that he's having to live with and Paul certainly this is a place when you have a vibration that can get very tricky. Kelly? Another big mover has been Joseph Newgarden. In spite of qualifying 21st he said he felt really good about his chances today. He said they just missed it in qualifying. He's already up 10 spots. Marco Andretti moved up quickly into the top five, and we've talked about racing teammates within the Penske. Well, he radioed in early on during that first yellow for rain. Tell Ryan, Hunter Ray, it's way too early to be pushing me high up like that. Kelly? Graham Rahal has advanced a couple of positions. Remember, he finished fifth here at Iowa last year. He was really confident, but he hasn't complained over the radio. At times of oversteer, 
and at times he says he feels a little bit of loose, especially in turn four, Kevin. Carlos Munoz has dropped from fifth to 14th. This is a new animal for him. He's been great on the big ovals like Indianapolis and Pocono, but he's only raced here in Indy Lights. And he said, when I came here for the first time a couple of years ago, it was scary. Much better last year, but different this year in the Indy car. And to show you how close it is, look at Kimball and Munoz going hard at it. These guys have right, been lapped. Still there, still there. And as we talked at the beginning of the show, the stranglehold that the Ready team had on this racetrack over the years, they are really struggling to all the cars have kind of fell off the wagon. No, I think Marco, he, we were thinking was really going to be looking good here tonight, uh, but he is certainly having troubles dropping down into 12. And for Carlos Munoz to be the highest qualifying and, and Dreddy driver, I don't think he would have thought that he'd be lapped before halfway through this race. And you saw there Sebastian Bourdais out of the car and seemingly out of this race. Meanwhile, Power and Briscoe going at it. This is a good scrap and it's been going on for many laps. This is for a top three spot held down by Briscoe at the moment. Canaan has a 2.8 second lead over Elio Castro Neves at the front. It's a lot tighter for third. Momentum is what it's all about. And it seems like the NTT data side of the Chip Ganassi garage has it at the moment with Ryan Briscoe. As we're getting close to the halfway point of the race, we're nearing the 150 mark of 300. This race is now, and we've got it going. It's going by quickly. And there's fights all over the track. Well, so now we're going to see traffic play a part in this Briscoe power fight. I think they're coming up to lap. Two oh, Australians here as Will Power gets a run. Power gets a good run there. He's just having difficulty getting by this lap car of Munoz, so definitely struggling with, with some traffic issues, having a hard time getting by. And of course, you know, these lap cars, you've got to remember that across the field, from uh, look 1st at, to 21st, look at four Saavedra. tenths of a Saavedra's second. about to make a move on Power. <laughs> Saavedra, while his teammate is out of the race, is carrying the hopes for Kevin Kalkoman and Jimmy Vassar with the KB AF and AFS team. He feels he should have got better results earlier this season. Remember, he was the pole sitter for the inaugural Grand Prix of Indianapolis. While it's going well on his side of the garage, the other side, not so good, Kelly. No, Sebastian Bourdais has now climbed out of his car. Sebastian, we saw you slow up a couple of times on track. What's going on with the car? Uh, we have an electrical issue, so the car keeps on shutting off and resetting the ECU, but every time it does that, it shuts off the engine. The first time we did it on the yellow, it took a long time for the car to fire back up. I got it going again, and uh, I thought it was fine. And then on bumps and stuff, it would shut off every now and again. But the engine kept running, and then finally the back straight just shut off completely. It took a long time to restart. We just can't take the chance to run like that. If it, if it happens when I'm fighting for positions, I'm going to put somebody in the fence. So. Just no point. Qualified six, I'm sure you had better hopes for your race here in Iowa. Yeah, and the car was really good as well. We can see Seb is running up there, and the first run was a bit difficult, but then, you know, the track kind of came to us, and I personally found some things with the lines, and I was pretty happy with the car, so it's a bit of a shame, but we'll keep digging. Disappointing end here for Sebastian Bourdais. Yeah, absolutely, Sebastian's 100% correct to get out of the car. You do not want to lose, have the car lose power in the middle of the corner because you can have a situation like we had with with uh, Ryan Hunter Ray and, uh, at Indianapolis where he had a car run over the top of him on the last lap. Up front, it is Tony Kanaan, 1.1 seconds ahead of Elio Castro Neves. First and second, it's been an intriguing fight, hasn't it? Ganassi versus Penske. leader Tony Kanaan comfortably out in front however Elio Castro Neves is edging closer and closer and in his rearview mirror all he can see is a flying Sebastian Saavedra for the KB AFS team the young Colombian is just clicking his way through the field he went flying past Will Power and Ryan Briscoe and here he is in third charging down the co-championship leader this is a drive to remember from Sebastian Saavedra. It's pretty incredible. I mean, the AFS KB racing team, this has got to be the highlight of the year for, for them. He's driving a phenomenal race. Uh, 
you know, he started way back no in 17th five. place. He was Taking driven five. his way past everybody right to, to the top leaders of, of the field, Penske and Ganassi. So very impressive. KV's got a good setup on this car tonight. The setup must be just perfect for these longer runs. It's just staggering the speed he showed in the last, what, 10 That's minutes. the leader slowing down ahead of you. You're doing awesome. <laughs> Quick reminder, you can be a part of Honda's fastest seat in sports oh, suite. Whoa, whoa. That was a fast seat. We're in the wall, we're in the wall. Get to the pit lane. Boy, oh boy. Coming in. Just as he got the call to slow it up. This Stay out. If the car is good, stay out. No. That's one of those things where you start building confidence and you're coming through the, the field and you're passing these you know, the top level drivers as Kelly's got him in the pit just got away from him. What a remarkable run Sebastian Saavedra had going all the way up there into the third position. The team just constantly encouraging him over the radio and you can see him sitting in pit lane now at times with his eyes just closed. He's got to be feeling pretty frustrated with himself. Uh, certainly high hopes here at KB Racing and uh, now we see the Sebastian disappointment. That's just, pits are now open. That just takes all the confidence that, that he built up in those few laps. Young. Four, well, here three, we get to see round two, three of the two one. leaders racing each other front to back on the pitch. We watch to see if they make any changes on Kanan. No changes on the front. They're getting out. He's out. Kevin. Will Power is going to try to beat Tony Kanan off. He's not, but he is going to get out second. Power said, I want no changes. The car changes quite a bit throughout, but I think we've got it as good as we can get it. Ed Carpenter right behind Power. He moved up a couple of star spots. Great work from the Fuzzies. Ed Carpenter racing team to leapfrog him up into third place ahead of Castro Neves. Good work from the Ganassi squad to send Briscoe out still in the top five. And here is Graham Rahal, the National Guard entry for Rahal, Letterman, Lanigan Racing. stationary Sebastian Saavedra after the drive of the race he is devastated revisiting Ed Carpenter's start right over right here right here how Morgan, slick was it up here. very grab the rag under the car clear out all clear out and there he goes past Castro Neves Leapfrog his way up into third place. Good work. Good job, good job. The Texas Motor Speedway winner earlier this year. Of course, doing half the season. He only does the ovals, and Mike Conway does the others. This is what happened to Sebastian Saavedra. Look just at the yellow a, and red car. He was just a little on the high side, and up he just got into the gray, and that rear just slid out. He corrected, but it just touched the wall, and it looks like it bent the toe link at the yeah. rear. You can see he's hanging on to it. So, he just turned in a little bit late and was just out of the groove, and that was it. He started to slide there, and he barely touched the wall. Boy, that was close for Ryan Briscoe. It was. So in the space of a handful of laps, the KV team sees both of their cars with serious troubles. And what could have been a career best result, albeit there's a long way to go, has suddenly taken a dramatic turn for Sebastian Saavedra. What a stunning evening here in Iowa. And we've got an equally impressive race as well. Tried to get this mentioned in a little earlier. Let's take two on that. The Honda's fastest seat in sports sweepstakes. Simply go to uh, shophonda.com to sign up to have a chance to lead the field to green in the Verizon IndyCar series. Most importantly, no purchase is necessary to be in the two-seater IndyCar behind the likes of Ari Diango. So, something promising to see Sebastian Vader back out there. The team did a terrific job to get the car fixed and sent back out, but he is a long way behind, seven laps down, and that's what happened when you uh, more than brushed the wall. That could have been a lot worse than it was. So that way he just, he got up into that grey stuff, got up into the clag and slid up and just click kissed the wall. Fast around here. It's 
Speaking of laps down, one thing that uh, Juan Pablo Montoya did was get himself back on the lead lap. There he is at the back of that group. So he's still down the tail end towards there in 15th, but he is back on the lead lap. 16 cars on the lead lap. Carlos Munoz is the last. There's Montoya back on the lead lap, back for the chance. Fresh rear end, and we are going great, 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 racing. Great, great, great. Nice on the inside. Move on well power. Well, way up. Way high. He's going to lose a couple of spots. Here comes his teammate Castro Neves Briscoe with a good look at the back of the Verizon Chevy. Ed Carpenter is on a mission. He's going out after Tony Kanan at the front. Look at that fuzzy Chevrolet go. He wants to add to his Texas victory here in Iowa. As you can see, Tony came down across the nose of him and drove down to the bottom of the track and you can see it washed out the front of Carpenter's car and killed the momentum that he had. So it's going to be a cat and mouse game. You have to drive not only looking in front of you, but also looking at where the other guy is behind you to kill the momentum. Good scrap here with the teammates. Castro Neves on the low line. Power on the high line. Briscoe. Then we go back to Dixon. We pick up Hinchcliffe, Pagano, under Ray, Newgarden. Good job, uh, clear by one, clear by two. Let's go get those guys. Encouraging words from the captain, Roger Penske. Here's Scott Dixon on his teammate. We've seen a lot of teammate battles tonight, particularly with the Penske and the Ganassi guys. It seems like Castro Neves car takes a few laps to get going. I don't know if he's starting with a lower tire pressure, but as the run goes on, Castro Neves car gets better. Now, the captain says, go after him, let's go. And he's pulled away from power now, and he's moving across to the other two guys. Scott Dixon having a good job getting past his teammate, Ryan Briscoe, who's having a fantastic night. Lurking right behind there, of course, is Hitchcliffe. Winner here last year, trying to repeat, and he's going to have his work cut out of the way he does. Uh, Tony Kanaan and Castro Nevis are going. On board with James Hitchcliffe. Let's enjoy the ride with Hitch. side but Dixon's got things going again, and he's able to make a move on Will Power, who goes high. It was pretty close right there when Dixon cut across the nose of Will Powers. It, it made the front of his car push out like it was a boat crossing a wake of another boat. Not the first time we've seen Hinchcliffe and Pagano go at it tonight. They've put on some terrific driving. They're fighting at the moment over sixth, seventh place. And it's time. Boy, keep digging outside. Ooh, it is time. He couldn't, couldn't keep it down there and keep his foot in the throttle. Yeah. I think what Hitchcliffe is really just trying to do is forcing him down low and, and just pinching him down so he can't keep his foot in the throttle. And while these two guys are duping it out between them, right behind Ryan Hunter Ray is moving in on them pretty quickly. Yeah, as long as these guys are racing side by side, they're not going as quick as they could possibly yeah. go. So that has allowed Hunter Ray to close in. If either of these two make a mistake, he'll be by the both of them. Paul, of course, when he gets pushed to the bottom like that, you know the hitch clip also, man, they are close. The more that he can push him down, yes, he loses the momentum, but he also wears the tires more, so that's going to be tough on the tire wear for Pasho. Now he is clear of Hinchcliffe, barely. Now they switch positions yeah. as Hinchcliffe does the crossover. Pagano finally got by, and he tried to do the crossover. Good job, let's go. And the next one. Blocking there as he like blocks his teammate from getting a run on him. As we see Hunter Ray in the background go to the high side of Hinchcliffe, I think 
he'll clear him on the back straight away. And does so. Yeah, he seems to be running pretty quick at the moment. Two guys who have seen the checkered flag first here at Iowa Speedway. Hinchcliffe oh. in trouble. He ran really high Hinge close to the wall. And look who's coming quick on the scene. It's Joseph Newgarden. Stone a crow. That was close to the wall. Yeah, that's Newgarden close it too back. That's what happens when you have 5,000 pounds of downforce and the, the turbulence that these wings put off. It's like the only way I can describe it to people is it's like the turbulence off of a off of the back of a boat when you cross over another boat and there's a wake it, it just causes the whole car to slide out from underneath of you it just goes straight to the wall and you've got to get out of the throttle these and big, avoid hitting the wall these big wings make a big hole in there oh a huge hole yeah. in there joseph newgarden who started way back has made up 11 positions in the top 10 now working on the defending winner sebastian Vader, Saavedra playing catch up after that Great super job, drive you own this place let's go get ray hall and it is encouraging to say you own this place let's go get him seven laps down after that accident earlier canaan has one second over ed carpenter then castro neves briscoe and dixon the top five Charlie Kimball, who we ride with here. Charlie's in 15th. That's what the lead looks like. After being hassled by Carpenter earlier, Kanan, who was buoyed by his qualifying run yesterday for a period there, it looked like he may have grabbed the pole position. Wasn't the case. His Ganassi teammate, Scott Dixon, stole it away. But this is a really Clear positive period in Tony Kanan's year. He didn't get the win last week. There was question marks over the strategy. Tony was clearly furious, frustrated, disappointed. And he even said to Kevin Lee yesterday after qualifying, we don't need luck, we need to get things right. And we didn't get last weekend right, we need to get it right tonight. And he came here, it wasn't disappointment that he came here with or frustration. He came here with total motivation, like right from the drop of the green in practice on Friday. He went straight out and went P1 in three laps. So he's highly motivated tonight to get a win. Go pull been saying all weekend that you really have been thinking this is going to be Tony Kanaan's race and certainly so far it's going all his way. Tony knows how to win here. He did it back in 2010. So far so good as we approach the 200 lap mark. been in control of this race for the majority of it. He is the focal point of today's Mazda driver profile. The veteran is well and truly in control of this race and he needs to be. Taking over from his good friend Dario Franchitti who was forced to retire through injury in that horrendous crash in Houston last year. This was something that Tony was looking very much forward to being a part of the target Chip Ganassi organization. The year has not quite gone to plan and this could be a marvelous turning point for one of the most loved and respected drivers in this IndyCar series. You won't find a guy who's he's got a, a second lease on life being able to get with the Ganassi team. You will not find a guy in the paddock that is in better to shape than Tony Romeo. Kanaan. He's competed and finished the Ironman Hawaii. If there's any guy you're going to put in the car that can get it done, he's one of them. Three seconds over Ed Carpenter, who is now under severe pressure from Elio Castro Neves. And as far as Castro Neves is concerned, yes, he's going after the win in this race. But so long as he stays ahead of Will Power, he will take the lead of this points championship into the double header on the streets of Toronto next weekend, where we hear there's a team of five or six bodyguards that will be surrounding Paul Tracy all weekend long from the tens of thousands that try and get their PT up there. Just kidding, but I know you're looking forward to going home. I'm not bringing a bunch of my big biker buddies. <laughs> As we see Castro Neves, he's working over Ed now. It seems like Castro Neves' car just gets better and better as the run goes on. I don't think there's anybody that's better than him out there other than Kanan. Kanan seems to just have a really good car. Uh, he's fast on the short run and on the long run. So I think Castro Neves is probably the second quickest car on the track. If we I think Carpenter's car is going off just a little bit on this long run, which is enabling Castro Neves, and right behind Castro Neves is Brian Briscoe, who's still showing, having a fantastic night. 
let's keep Pocono in mind last weekend. Let's keep Houston in mind on fuel strategy. And I'm taking you to JPM, Juan Pablo Montoya. Although he's not in this shot, he is in 11th position. I mentioned earlier, he got himself back on the lead lap. He's only 10 seconds out of the lead of this race, and he has five laps more fuel than the others that he is racing. They all pitted on lap 162. He pitted on 167. Kev, how's things looking at the number two camp? Well, I don't do the fuel as well as John Bikas does, but uh, I think that they're gonna be fine to get it done in one more stop. The others probably, but I think it's gonna be very close for the others if we stay green the rest of the way. What do you think, Jan? Kevin, I think that's the key. If it were to stay green all the way, everyone except for Montoya would have to hit it perfectly. They would have to save a little bit of fuel, and you have to get to lap 230, 230. That's what the leaders are looking for. Not the case of Montoya. Montoya should have more breathing room. His job a lot easier tonight. It's on at the front for second. Castro Neves and Carpenter. And the Penske man slides his way through into second. Oh, he's got a second and a half to make up on Kanan, who's been the measure of the field. As you see Ed now, you can tell his handling is he's really fighting it now. You can see the front's pushing. Got a guy now looking on the bottom side. You can just hear he's got to be in and out of the throttle, and he's making adjustments on the weight jacket with his thumb. As he says, my car's just not feeling good in the dirty air. That wake of the cars in front of him, he's having a hard okay, time we'll get the just to get stop. by Jack Hawksworth, who's who's multiple laps down now. And Ryan Briscoe fast approaches in the NTT data entry. He's now putting pressure on Carpenter. I think it's been a huge learning experience tonight for the four rookies in the field. Michaela Lotion is already out. Uh, Carlos Guertas is out as well. Munoz and Hawksworth have had their hands full, and here comes Briscoe. Big run by Briscoe. He was able to clear. time it perfectly. Ed's not able to get close to that lap car in front of him. No, and Ed's car is definitely going up on this long run. And yeah, and, the, and that lap car in front of him, of course, is, is great. It's uh, Hawksworth, who's already down uh, three laps. It's um, awful dirty air. I can't do anything. I'm glad I'm not Jack Hawksworth, to be quite honest. I wouldn't want to be out there with these power guys at all. Yes, look and at this, Dixon. And your mirror's looking low. And power low. lining up for a shot, and you heard Carpenter say, in dirty air, I can't do anything, Paul. Yeah, it's just, like I said earlier, the, the wake of the turbulence that comes off these cars with these huge road course wings on the car just... When he was on fresh tires, he could manage it, but now that the tires are worn, you start to slide, you wear out the tires even more, and now he's hanging on for dear life. And he's getting up very close to the wall on a couple of occasions. Three of the top four cars are Chip Ganassi's cars. And just revisiting a point from earlier in the broadcast, Chip's men have not seen Victory Lane in nine months. The pressure mounts on Canaan, Briscoe, and Dixon. Charlie Kimball's a little far out of the picture at the moment. He's on the other three. Quick reminder that on Thursday, July 31st, League of Dealmakers is on NBCSN. Dana Meekham and his army of car aficionados get the show on the road as they head for Houston. You can go behind the scenes with Meekham Dealmakers. Thursday, July 31st, right here on NBCSN. Welcome back to Iowa. Lee Diffie, along with IndyCar champ Paul Tracy. David Hobbs is here from NBCSN's Formula One team. Jan Bikas, Kelly Stavis, Kevin Lee, Robin Miller. On what has been a really memorable night so far. For the eighth time, IndyCars have come to the heartland to race here at Iowa Speedway. We have seen quite the show. Tornado watch earlier. We got going, and then we had a brief stop for some 26 minutes as a shower came through got back to racing and it's been quite the tornado inside the seven eighths of a mile iowa speedway with passes like you've never seen we've had four cautions covering 48 laps joseph newgarden's made up 11 positions tony canard has been in control of the race and here comes simon pagino hitting from seventh place This is lap 229, just clicked over to 230. This is the number you need to hit. You're still going to have to save a little bit of fuel, but this should be the final pit stop and a caution. Yellow, yellow. Trouble for Marco Andretti. 
This could be a problem for Pagano having yeah, been Yeah, that in the unfortunately pits. is not good for Simon Pagano. It's good for everyone else who did not pit. Yeah, that's just completely bad oh luck. Boy, he oh was boy. already in the pit lane. And this looks like Texas all over again for Marco. And you can see he just threw his hands in the air in frustration. Look at the cars on fire again, like Texas it was. Wow, what a bad break for Simon. Oh. There is Kyle Moyer and the Andretti Autosport squad. And it has been a uh, pretty frustrating year. There's been a few glimpses of high spots for Marco, but there has been quite a bit of frustration. So he joins the list of Sato, Aloshan, Huertes, and Bourdais. We're going to go on board. Have a listen to this. Is that a Kablamo? <laughs> that is Kablamo. <laughs> So as the whole Metro safety team go to rescue, the snapple entry of Marco Andretti pits are open. And we're about to see some frantic activity. And there has been some tremendous races off pit road tonight amongst Canaan, Castro Neves, Dixon Power, Carpenter's team did great last time round. And here we go. Jan, you mentioned before it's time for the next round. Let's do it again. Well, this will be the final round. This will be the last opportunity these Four, top three will three, have to change two, positions again. They pit very close together. Does Canaan and Castro Neves. We watch for changes. They're going to need all the fuel, so they have to wait for the fuel. And Canaan gets the run first. And here comes Dixon. Wow, Scott Dixon flies out of pit road. The Penske boys come out together. They block Ryan Briscoe. Look at Montoya. Montoya has jumped an enormous amount of positions, three, to put himself amongst that lead pack. That was that extra little bit of fuel. He had less time on pit road. He had five more laps of fuel. And now we have the Colombian in the mix, ready to go racing with a shootout Saturday night. Did he beat James Hinchcliffe off pit road? That's the question that needs to be answered as he went straight ahead of Hinch. It seemed as though he didn't want to settle for that, but perhaps now it is obvious. Let's show you at the line as they come blasting off. There goes Canard. Next, you'll see Dixon. He beats Castro Neves out. Then there's Power. Next is Briscoe. There is Carpenter. Yes, he did get him. Montoya did just get Hinchcliffe out the line. Boy, it was just two, wasn't it? Canard's crew has been flawless tonight. They were flawless in Pocono, and they've continued here. We'll see what happens. Well, I want to give a shout out to the pit crew, to, well, to the entire team. These guys are working incredibly hard. They always do, but it's a condensed schedule this year. These guys are just like going on a rope swing from event to event, very little time at home with their families, hot, humid conditions here tonight. They go back, they've got to rebuild, they've got to regroup, and then head to the doubleheader in Toronto. The men and women of these race teams have been working like never before. It's taken its toll on some of the teams, but they continue to grind out and produce unbelievable pit stops like that. Well done to the crews. Awesome performance. National Guard crew looking on at Graham Rahal. He's in 13th at the moment on this cycle. Coming out of the pits, it's Canard, Dixon, Castro, Neves, Power, Briscoe. It's all Penske and, and uh, Ganassi at the front. Carpenter, Montoya is seven. After, it seems like just a little while ago, he was a lap down. There is Andretti's car being rescued. Back, it's Hinchcliffe, Newgarden, and Hunter Ray rounding out the top ten. And this is what happened back at Texas Motor Speedway earlier in the year after a very promising start. Pretty unusual to have these uh, engine problems. Tell us more, Kev. Add insult or at least more frustration to what's been happening. Marco had just radioed in. Remember, he started up near the front in the uh, eighth position, but slipped back. Uh, he got up as high as 50. He said, you know, I think the car is coming to us, and we're going to be able to move up. And then they lose the engine. Jan and Kevin, it was so interesting to show those two shots from the same angle. You saw the two different wing packages that Paul Tracy was talking about. When you saw the previous one in Texas, you saw how the air wasn't much very disturbed. But today you could see the big swirling action of the smoke that Paul's been trying to describe as like following a boat. You could visually see how this air is disturbed everyone's battling with tonight. Before we go racing, track's being cleaned up. 
Marco's car's been rescued. We're going to squeeze in a quick break. Come back to see the restart of this race. Ready to go racing here at Iowa Speedway, the Iowa Corn Indy 300. And Iowa Corn brings us, excuse me, the biggest movers in this race. And let's show you who they are. Juan Pablo Montoya from 19th to 7th. Could he get back-to-back -back wins and spring another surprise? Joseph Newgarden doing really well also. With the same amount of positions gained. Defending race winner James Hinchcliffe making nice work as well. They're packed up nice and tight. Ready to go racing. Ready to end the caution. Green flag flies. That's the Ganassi duo at the front. Canaan and Dixon. We haven't said that this year. Another really nice start by Canaan. Seems to have everything under control. As we see Montoya now pulling up in the picture, he's only got a couple of positions to get to his teammate power and try to get a, get ahead of him for the points battle. Riding with Ed Carpenter. Both chopping at the throttle again, so any changes that they've made to try to correct the turbulence and the washout that he was having, they, I don't think they fixed because you can hear him chop out of the throttle. Yeah, Montoya's right behind him. Hinchcliffe dived on the inside of Newgarden. Now Joseph wants a shot at one Pablo Montoya. The Sarah Fisher Hartman entry on the inside. Uh, outside, still there. Nice move, but still Montoya's there. not going to relinquish the position that easily. He's not going to, now that he's in position to get a good finish, I don't think Montoya will concede with, with a lot of ease. He's going to keep fighting. Spirited run from Joseph Newgarden. Up front, Kanan and Dixon. Both want this win as badly as the other. Managing director of Chip Ganassi Racing, Mike Hull, told us earlier this afternoon, the worst part about when you get a win is wondering if you can do it again and when you're going to do it again. They haven't done it in Trying nine months as Dixon, inside, the defending corner. series champ, goes to the side. inside of Canaan. So slices to the inside. Canaan's going to try to hang it out here on the outside as long as he can. He's weathered the storm of other guys like Castro Neves for multiple laps until his car gets going. It seems like his pressures are down a little bit. And it takes him a few laps to get going, but I think Dixon might have him here. There's only been three leaders of this race. Tony Kanaan, Elio Castro Neves, and Scott Dixon. Dixon has then led one lap against Kanaan's 212. Boy, Kanaan, talk about He doesn't win this race now. Well, he doesn't want to give up that lead, but if he just gets another six inches, you'll see Dixon chop up in front of him here on the edge of the corner, and it'll be game over as he did right there. likes the high side, Scott likes the low side. Scott now moves up the track a You'll little bit. You'll drive back fine, buddy. We'll get better here after the few laps. Kanan, like he said, I think Kanan's car is better on the long run, so he's going to have to be wait this out, regroup, maybe make some adjustments, and then come back on him like he is right now. Yeah, we're here racing against Scott Dixon here, who's also going to be making adjustments to his car. Kev, what do you got? Well, Juan Pablo Montoya's car was not only struggling early, he then had the rear wing change that we documented that caused him to go a lap down, but he's back in the chase, running inside the top 10 and 8. This is Brian Campy, who took over as the lead engineer four races ago. So he's finished third, seventh, and one. So it's gone pretty well. And he came over from NASCAR, and that's actually worked quite well because Juan's been away so long, he still refers to NASCAR terms and might say, it's like it did this uh, at over or some other NASCAR track, and Brian will understand what he's talking about, so that's worked well. Juan Pablo Montoya did 42 Sprint Cup starts on NASCAR's short tracks, it's which coincidentally with his NASCAR number. It's hard to believe that a guy from outside, Columbia who's raced outside. an IndyCar in Formula One would be using NASCAR terminology to talk to his IndyCar engineer. So. Just shows <laughs> how diverse a driver he really is. Well, his car seems to be coming in because Joseph Newgarden had the better of him earlier on just, just after the green flag. Newgarden's car now seems to be going off the boil a little bit. Montoya got back past him. And Newgarden's run seems to be coming to an end. Hinchcliffe's going down the inside. Yeah. That's tight, tight racing there. Newgarden came around the outside. Got a lot of time for Joseph Newgarden. I think he's a really pretty stout driver. So for you guys and the wonderful careers that you enjoyed as we enjoyed this battle between Hinch and Joseph, the only man, the only driver in our sport that we love to win the Indy 500, Daytona 500, Le Mans 24 and Rolex 24 at Daytona, Supertex AJ Foyt.
Montoya has won two of those races as well. If you were Juan Montoya, would you find a way to get a ride at the Daytona 500 and 24 hour or more and try and match that? Well, I think absolutely. I think he still has time on his side. He's still not up in his age. Uh, he's young, he's fresh, he's in good shape. I think there's plenty of time for him to get to Le Mans. And obviously, we know he's vastly experienced now in stock car, so he can get a ride with Roger in a top-level car, which would be a good opportunity. What a fight this is. Hinchcliffe is not letting Newgarden get away. Newgarden's not letting James Hinchcliffe come through easily. And having a front-row view of this is Ryan hunter -Ray. Getting towed along by those big holes that these two cars are causing. Gets a bit of a draft. Whoa! Oh. As soon as he got out of the way, cut, cut across as, the front of him. As there. soon as he crossed over the wake of, of yeah, uh, Hunter, he lost the front uh, end. Yeah, he lost, the rear stepped out, the front stepped out. It was just hang on for dear life. As soon as he got in the wake of the car in front of him. Up front, there's only three tenths of a second between Dixon and Canaan. Castro Neves is a further one and a half seconds back. Power, then Carpenter fifth, Briscoe sixth, Montoya seventh. Hinch, Hunter eight, you got it. This fight we're watching here as RHR goes ahead. Graham Rahal is sneaking up nicely in the background. He's in 11. Trying to make a move on Joseph here. Spoke to Mitch Davis from the Rahal Letterman Lanigan team earlier today, and he said, you know what? Air yeah, qualified 15th. That's nothing to shout from the rooftops about, but Graham feels confident in the car, and he's got laps left as we race. Lap 262, 39 to go. And the laps are flying by the restart was whoa cool. that's tight quarter oh, yeah. by but that was that was close. really forcing the issue on new garden it left him no room uh almost put him up in the gray so that was a forceful move and the laps are flying by remember the boys told you how hurtful that caution would be to simon pagino here he is into the stage meanwhile up front the fight's on canard and Dixon Kanan drops to the low line. He goes. Really decisive move there from TK. It looked like Kanan in the traffic used the pick as well. It looked like Dixon's car came up on the traffic. It was the first time he had any turbulence to deal with. And Kanan was able to close up and make the move. And now he's got by the both cars in one lap. Neves and Power coming together. The two guys at the top of the championship. If positions remained as is, Elio would have a four-point lead heading to Toronto. We still got 34 laps left to race to decide that. Which is there are no yellow flags. Well, it will only take about 15 minutes or less. The longest 15 minutes of your yeah. life when you're the leader. Absolutely. I'll tell you that totally been waiting for a win. win for quite a long time. And Although he's been in control all night, as the laps wind down, it seems like the, a 17 seconds turns into minutes at times. So oh. these will be the longest laps of your life. Yeah, he'll be just thinking, let's have a rain or something. Look at this, look at this in the background. And move on the inside, it's Montoya on Briscoe. He just keeps clicking them off. JPM, now Briscoe comes back around the outside. This is the fight for sixth place. Ryan Briscoe has had a great night. He too has had a, a little bit of a lackluster season, not gone exactly how he wanted it to, but tonight he's having a terrific run. It's hard. He is just hanging on for dear life with really. Like he's getting everything there is to get out of that car. If you see him, you know, it was an in-car there, and he's, it stepped out on him. He's hanging on. His history. If you're not familiar with Ed Carpenter's background, long history in USAC sprints and Silver Crown racing. He's raced on a lot of short tracks here in the state of Iowa. Oh, and there you get oh, a big yeah. lift again. Look like a sprint car. Well, you can see that he can really pedal a car, but what keeps happening, the car is really good after a pit stop, and then he starts to lose the balance, and he's just, just like Paul said, he's hanging on for dear life. They can't seem to keep it consistent all the way through a run. I tell you from my own experience, it is absolutely zero fun when the rear steps out at 180.
85 miles an hour at a high bank corner. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's like two feet from the wall in the first place. Ray Hall and New Garden going at it. This is for the final spot in the top ten. Ray Hall owns it at the moment. Keep working. Hawks going to stack you guys Out up in the number one. Keep looking, look. Ray Hall. They look really good at the moment, don't they? <laughs> All the way through seventh place. The lead Honda is James Hinchcliffe in eighth. really up on the high side as he dives to the bottom of Hawksworth, but he's really pushing up the track and running a high line on the exit. Less than a second away from Ryan hunter Ray up the road. Go get Ryan. There you go, right on cue. Go get Ryan. Nice and smooth. Briscoe on Carpenter seems to have been able to shake off the challenge from Juan Pablo Montoya for now. Can he do anything about the fuzzy Chevrolet? And Ed Carpenter. Final 24 laps here at Iowa Speedway on what has been a thoroughly enjoyable night. Can Tony Kanaan pull off a victory for the first time since he won his maiden Indianapolis 500 last May? It seems like forever. Briscoe to the inside Looking of Carpenter. Low. Not there. And it'll be the and first time Ganassi has won this year, will it not? Absolutely. It's been a nine-month drought for the target Logan, chip Ganassi organization. Inside. Nice little run by Briscoe through the center of the corner. He was able to get position on Ed as Ed continues to work the higher line, but I think Briscoe will have him now as they go into one. His car is working good on the bottom, Briscoe, and I think you'll see him pull ahead here. Carpenter not giving up at all. The hardest things each and every driver will tell you in the Verizon IndyCar Series is the depth of talent in this field. Maybe in years gone by it wasn't so strong, and so you were able to make some positions from the back a lot easier. All of these guys are amazing. Go, take, go. take Ryan Briscoe for a case in point. Back when he was racing Euro F3 uh, Euro F3 and he won the championship in 2003, he beat the current Formula One World Championship leader Nico Rosberg. He beat guys like Robert Kubica. He beat DTM World Champion, uh, DTM Champion Bruno Spengler. The list goes on. This field is strong, full of guys with amazing global motorsport stories. Montoya, another example. These guys, Castro Neves and Power, fighting over that third spot. Oh, oh Montoya's, Montoya's out! in the wall! I think he got on the inside of Ed. I was watching one of the other TVs, and he went for a move down on the inside of Ed. Okay, it's out of control. Yeah, it looks like he got chopped by Ed. He said, I saw him make a move down the inside, and I will bet right there, bud. that the air was taken off of his car, and it came out from under him. An amazing run has come to an end for Juan Pablo Montoya. This is how it happened. Yeah, he took a look down the inside, and Ed just continued oh, down. Oh, Ed Whoa. just pushed him. Yeah. Oh, boy. I wouldn't want to be Ed. And that was not the line that Ed has been running for quite a while. He's been up two or three grooves from that. So I'm sure Montoya, when he came up on him, saw that, you know, this. I'm going to go to the bottom. Well, he's mad, you can tell. He's going to have a finger yeah, yeah. finger wave at, at Ed. Maybe, Maybe a little fire bit more. something at or give them the... And when Pablo Montoya knew that he was on a good thing... And the incident with car 2 and car 20 is under review. Well, that wasn't very good. I, I've got to say that Ed really chopped him down. But places like this, you have to make room. But if you're going to race, you've got to race clean because you just can't uh, it's, it's too risky well Ed, Ed's been running a high line all night so I'm sure he was, was watching his line and Ed just turned down right on top of him but you know, Montoya wasn't all the way in there he was had a nose in but his spotters would have let Ed know that there was a car on the inside as well so yeah I mean he just chopped down on me I obviously saw him coming and said no you can't go by on the inside here because Nobody's been running down that low. And this That's has a pretty, pretty good hit, too, yeah. as well. Yeah. Car lifted off the ground. And this is what it looked like from Ed Carpenter as he comes around. Now he's saying to Montoya, what are you talking about? And Montoya is saying the same thing. What were you thinking? 
Well, I don't well, think, afraid it's going to be bite last, last week when he sees the replay. It's going to be kind of hard to squeak out of that one. I don't think he was going to throw his helmet at him because those helmets now are worth about $8,000 without paint on the F1 spec helmets. So they're definitely not wants to throw over him. First non-finish, the first DNF for Montoya this year. Up until that point, he had completed all but two laps. And that brings out our sixth portion of the night. Tony has now got to deal with the threat of another restart. He's been really strong on the restarts. Uh, it's taken him a while to get up to speed, so we'll see if, if uh, Dixon can make a run on him again with only 15 laps to go. We're going to have a, a really a barn burner from here out. By the time they bring the, the uh, by the time they get this wreckage cleared up, there's only going to be Ten laps, yeah, ten laps, maybe seven, less. Seven, ten laps, five, five to well. seven laps left. It's going to be a frantic scramble, and you've got the two guys. One has been reviewed. No action. No action on the twenty. Thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I don't think Montoya was completely all the way in there, but you know, I can understand his frustration. But that was a different line than Ed had been running all night long. So. It's, it's, you know, there's definitely some question that could get raised, but ultimately Montoya wasn't all the way in there. David, your thoughts? Well, he wasn't already in there, but I mean, he was close enough to, that it was, uh, a, a, that's what I'd call a block. I mean, you, you can't get much more blatant block than that. Let's listen to some radio transmission from both cars. Here we go. We're in the wall. Are you okay? That guy's out of control. I was going to try to go low that time just to try something different. I didn't mean to stuff him. But I don't know if it's my fault. Well, I mean, I guess, you know, he's been running the high line all night and he's been ha struggling with handling. We've seen him struggle on multiple occasions getting loose. So he was going to try something different to try to change the handling. I mean, that's what you do as a racing driver. So I think it's just one of those things, you know, obviously he didn't intentionally try to, I don't think, run him below the rail. Has a big, uh, has a big impact on Montoya in the championship. Well, he was say. gaining ground on his two Penske teammates and just 55 points out of the lead of the championship coming into this 12th round he'll be at least 70 plus points behind and he'll drop a couple of positions so he's going to take an opportunity to try to do something with the handle I don't think there's any damage to the car he's got some vibration in that steering wheel hasn't he John Beekes is there and we know that he does better when he's on fresh tires so they're going to go ahead and put a fresh set of Firestones on here make any changes that he needs same thing we saw for Ryan Hunter <laughs> Kevin Pablo Montoya has just exited the medical center. You're okay, first of all? Yeah, I'm good. You know, our, our, our PPU Chevy was really good today. You know, we had all kinds of issues, and yesterday in qualifying got really loose. And, you know, we came back today. We're really strong, passing people, you know. I got inside of him, and he just, he was running high. The ozone decided to run low. You know, he's been running every lap on the top. I got to run. I got inside of him, and it's like he, I mean, they all love preaching safe racing and everything, but when you're going to pass them, they're just douchebags, you know? They reviewed it, and they said no action taken, so there's going to be well, no penalty. I'll take some action later. There you go. Juan Pablo Montoya heated, as you can understand. All right, all right. He's going to take some action later, but I, you know, it's just one of those things. Though. He's obviously frustrated, had a bad night tonight, all kinds of problems, like you said, but... You know, he does have a point where Ed has never run that line the whole night, so I can see his point. Carpenter yeah. was furious with James Hinchcliffe at the Indianapolis 500 this year for Hinch making an inside move. And then now, Ed Carpenter, once this race is finished, he's going to be on the other side of it. Young. And, of course, Tony's wife, Lauren, is watching. And I know it's been tough riding around in the bus with a guy who's had two really tough weekends and no wins. How are you feeling now? You know, the past weekends have been such bitter disappointments, not just for Tony, but for this whole 10 team. They've really worked hard for some just junk results. So, I mean, everyone's got their fingers crossed this one works out. They really deserve it. They have a lot of confidence coming in. The car's been fast all weekend. You know, he did, and he does well at Iowa. His track record's been good here the past couple of years. He knows this place well, and, you know, he likes it. So, yeah, that helps. All right, here we go. We've got a 10-lap shootout to determine if we're going to have another new winner this year. Tony Kanaan and teammate Scott Dixon are the first two cars to see the green. And then a pair of Penske's are chasing him down. Elio Castro Neves and Will Power. Briscoe's in the mix. Here comes the defending winner, James Hinchcliffe. These 10 laps are going to fly on by. 
Another really good start by Kanan as we see Pagano trying to work his way through the field as we see Newgarden around the outside threading the needle. And then another car, Graham Rahal, threading in between the wall. So Pagano's going backwards at a pretty quick right. It's all about going forward. There's half a second between the Ganassi men at the front. Pagano really wanted a good result here because he too has been coming up to the field. Hunter Ray blasts through on the inside, past Will Power. That moves for fourth. Yeah, don't forget, he's got new tires, so he's going to have an advantage over the Whoa. others. Oh, Will Power goes oh, way high. Wow, into the wow, wall. wow. Did he brush the wall? I don't there? think he did. He's lost positions. Look at this. By the second, they are flying wow. past him. I, I think he might have a flat bottom. tire. That rear left is the rear left down. Or rear right. He's in serious trouble. I think he has a flat. I think he must have a flat. So he's now down. Now Castro Neves has a problem. He, they're flying by him as well. The two there guys at the top him. of the championship are in trouble. Tony Kanaan, he gains another 10. Five Scott four. Dixon. Five, four. five laps to go here at Iowa. Seems like Castro Neves has recovered from whatever happened, but. Will Power has not recovered. Power is 14th. He was in fourth at the restart. Look at Brian Andre Ray. Ray. Blast through on the inside. Remember Telling Andretti Autosports history here. Yeah. With this amount of laps to go, he might be able to chase down Kanani. He's it's got fresh tires, close. and he's coming. There's going to be three laps when you come around. A new garden goes by. Five. What a run he's had. Five wins are on offering. Five in a row, I should say, for Andretti Autosport. And Ryan hunter who has won here before, is storming to the front, and so too Joseph Newgarden. Come on, Tony, you're going to have to dig deep and pull you everything boy. you've got. This is Fresh tires are going to be hard to beat, as we see hunter Ray is coming. To get underneath you. He has got him on the inside. Kanan's going to fight as hard as he can, but Ryan hunter Ray is going to spoil the Ganassi party. Oh, what a crushing blow for Tony Kanan, and here comes Joseph Newgarden. Absolutely. And Newgarden has new tires as well. Same strategy for Newgarden is paying. Paying big. Lauren Kanan knows that the win has escaped her husband for now. Newgarden dives to the inside of TK. As we're on the final lap, it has been a miserable run for Ryan hunter Ray ever since winning the Indianapolis 500. RHR is going to turn it around and continue Andretti's domination in Iowa. hunter Ray wins in the homeland. Movers in the field finish in the top two positions. Hunter Ray made up 12 spots from his grid position. Newgarden 19. What an outstanding Where's result for Ryan Hunter Ray. Boy, I feel for Tony Canano. He just had that race locked up for the entire time. And the strategy of these Andretti guys won them the race. That last minute stop, those tires just did it. Yeah, it absolutely shows you the power Kanana of the gusset of tires, what, how much quicker we can't get a break, man. And Michael, what a call on the pit stand going for new tires. It's funny, we talked about it before the race. We said, you know, 15 laps to go, we're putting new tires on, and uh, and it worked, you know. I mean, uh, it was a little gutsy. We gave up about four spots, but uh, as you can see, it was a big difference. So, uh, real proud of the whole team. It was a tough night for us all night long, but we all hung in there, and uh, Ryan did a hell of a job there in the end. What a spectacular finish and a great call on pit road. And it has huge bonuses championship-wise, heading to a double header. Hunter Ray rockets into third place in the championship, fast approaching the two Penske men ahead of him. Tony Kanaan and Scott Dixon can only talk about what could have been on a marvelous night. And big dividends paid to Graham Rahal. He also made that late stop for fresh tires. He finishes seventh. So too Carlos Munoz had the same strategy as our race winner. But storming home in the DHL Honda, and the, two, and the two championship leaders, Castro and Neves, drop back to eighth, and Will Power, after that scary moment, is down there in 19th and 13th spot. And there is Ed Carpenter, who is involved in that incident with Juan Pablo Montoya, having words with his team, but I'm sure there's going to be words between he and this man here, Joseph Newgarden, with a career high second place. Unbelievable, and in a race that was dominated by Chevys, sees Honda come home first and second. What a night in Iowa. Mike Hull, managing director of Chip Ganassi Racing with 
the two highest finishes for the Ganassi team. Sarah Fisher, who's the owner of New Garden, first time at the track for some time after just having a baby. So, <laughs> what, a, what a way for her to come back. Great finish for her and her team. Tony Tony Canard. Canard. Boy, I just know how you feel sometimes. Just awful. Said on the radio, we can't seem to catch a break here. But he drove superbly and led 247 laps of the 300 laps. Ryan Hunter Ray only led two. <laughs> the one is the most important one. How about well, that? You'll see a smile on, on Hunter Ray's face again. He's had such frustration the last few races. Pocono last week going out early, having a problem. And wow, he rockets back into the lead here with a great strategy call by Michael, his team leader. How about this? Since the Indy 500, Hunter Ray finished 16th, 19th, 19th, 7th, 6th, and 18th. The Indy 500 winner is back in victory lane. And that late stop in the race, called by Michael Andretti, is huge, was huge. And Andretti Autosport get five in a row at Iowa Speedway. They own this place. Young. And what a celebration for the crew we spoke to. Michael said that was something they had discussed prior. He obviously is high-fiving all the crew. Ryan, what a call from pit lane. There wasn't that many laps to go. You probably figured there was no chance you're gonna be standing here. I think I swallowed a star confetti. <laughs> uh, man, that was crazy. We took the, uh, we took the tires as a big gamble and um, my tires were shot before that. So we took them and uh, you know, credit to Ray Gosselin and Michael Andretti for making that call because I didn't think we'd have enough time. They were, t the, the safety crew did an excellent job getting that cleaned up so that we can go racing at the end. So that was really great. Man, that was fun. That was like a video game at the end. It was just, just shredding through it. The DHL 2800 was just, was just on fire at the end. It was really, really good. And you knew that you obviously had a huge advantage because you had been out there on Warren tires, knew that as you built momentum, you were just picking them off. And again, you came down just thinking, do I have enough time? Yeah, I mean, the thing was on the rails at the end, you know, and I, I knew that we, we had no shot uh, where we were before on the older tires. So, man, we went for it. We had such a tough day. I mean, we had a tough day in the pits. We had a tough day on track. Things were just not going right. That's why you just got to keep your head in it and, uh, and and be ready for whatever comes in the Verizon IndyCar Series. Just a great day, you know. Congratulations to Honda. I, I had the power when I needed it there at the end, and um, the new Firestones were just uh, were just unreal. I, I hope I can do that again sometime. That was fun, where everybody's uh, everybody's on old tires and I'm on new. That was that was amazing. Well, that was fun to watch as well. Remember that everything went all wrong in Pocono a week ago. Now it's gone all right. And he becomes the first three-time winner in season 2014. People were asking. Lots of questions about RHR after winning the Indy 500. And now he's answered those questions. Amazing performance from Andretti Autosport yet again. You're watching NBCSN's coverage of IndyCar, brought to you by Battery Tender, proud sponsor of Graham Rahal. Become a part of the race at racetogive2014.com. And by Iowa Corn, fill up with ethanol. It's renewable, better for our environment, and grown by Iowa's farmers. Welcome back to the Iowa Corn Indy 300. What a race for Joseph Newgarden, starting 21st, and you tie your career best with a second place finish. Fresh tires were key. We heard you say it was like a video game out there for those last 10 laps. That was the weirdest experience I've had in a race. Um, it's almost unfair. You put on tires like that, and you know you just have so much more grip than everybody. It was a great call, really great call, and I knew it was going to be an interesting race because Graham and Ryan had done it in front of me, and I thought, you know, if this is going to play out, it's going to be between us. And Ryan got a good jump, and I got a good jump with him, and then we kept carving up to the top, and I knew the laps were clicking down, and, and about five to go, you realized, okay, this is going to get really good, but it just was not enough time to get Ryan. So I, I think it's, you know, it's really cool. Obviously, finishing on the podium is a great job for our whole team, especially after qualifying. We made a bit of an error there. And, we just did an amazing job tonight. Our, our team was solid. We had such good pit stops, really good strategy, just um, kept our head in the game the entire way. You know, we didn't, we didn't have the, the best balance all race long, but there was parts where we were really fast, and we just kept with it, and at the end there, we, we made it when it counted. We've documented some of the struggles you've had throughout the season, and certainly your share of bad luck. Do you feel like this can turn the page on your season? Well, there's nothing I can say that happened that was bad luck tonight. I think we were catching all the breaks we could. You know, we could have been a little better on balance, and, you know, we, we could have had better track position by qualifying, you know, higher up. But 
there's nothing that happened that was you know out of our control really so we, it, it was great to have a run that I think was representative to our pace you know we were definitely a top 10 car tonight we probably got a little more than we needed there with, with doing the new tire strategy but you know what this team deserves it they, they work really hard they do a great job we got great leadership we got great management great mechanics great engineers I'm just happy for our group really because they work hard for it and you know to get a result every now and then it, it's something you need obviously and, and we've been waiting for it a great day for Sarah Fisher Hartman racing to Kevin well, it was a great day for Tony Kanaan until, until, and we talked yesterday. I said something about needing some luck. He said, no, we, we need to make our own luck. We've done some things, but there's really nothing you could have done with strategy here. You can't pick with the lead. No, I mean, uh, it's one of those things, you know, they took a gamble, and it's such a shame because we dominated the race, and, and I had a lot of fun, but what can I do? I mean, uh, seems like uh, we'd be knocking on the door, and to win races, we have to run up front, so uh, that's what we've been doing. Let's take take the third place and then go to Toronto. I can't thank you know Firestone for the great tires, you know Chevy and, and Target and TNT for for the great support. I hope the fans like the race. It was uh, probably we led too much, so it was a little bit boring. But uh, man, we can't get it right, but we'll get it. Yeah, the car was definitely right tonight, and Tony Canaan could have won. Jan. And Ed Carpenter was hoping that he would have had a shot as well. He took tires at the end, but you said you didn't put those tires on until a lap after people like Ryan Hunter Ray. Yeah, I mean, we just hesitated, um, you know, and then we were riding around, and I'm like, you know, I'm struggling. These things aren't good. I'm not going to gain spots. We're probably going to lose. So then we ultimately made the decision to come in. Uh, but kudos to, to Ryan and, the, and Joseph for making the right call. You know, it's, it's a little bit of a bummer. I didn't see many Hondas up front all night. It seemed like Chevys were kind of dominating the night to, to not get a win for Chevy. But uh, we at least made it exciting at the end, took tires and, and got up to fifth, which is better than where we would have finished if we would have stayed out. So, um, you know, we struggled with the car tonight. So to be honest, I'm pretty happy with fifth. It was a long night. I need to ask you about the incident on track with Juan Pablo Montoya. How do you see it? Yeah, I mean, I feel bad. I, I certainly wasn't trying to take him out. I knew he had been working the inside. I was struggling. I went, I went, I was just going to try the low side that time. I didn't know he was that far in there. Lee, my spotter, was trying to tell me he was there, but it was too late. I had already started coming down. So, you know, my apologies. I definitely wouldn't have appreciated that if I was on the other end of it. Uh, but at the same time, it wasn't intentional. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Juan, so hopefully we can talk about it without without me getting my butt kicked. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> Thanks. He looked pretty mad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He knows. We he knows. That, he knows there's a conversation Fair. coming. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. A whole lot more to come from Iowa. We return to the speedway. The two laps, the only two laps that Ryan Hunter Ray won, were the first laps he's led since winning the Indianapolis 500. And look at that, Honda 1 2 at the top. Kanaan with a much needed podium, but it wasn't the result he was looking for. And what happened to former points leader Will Power? Castro Neves finishes eighth, Will finishes in 14th. Let's check in with Kevin. Well, Scott Dixon finishes second, uh, finishes fourth after running second so much of the race. It looked like Tony decided. I'm going to laugh because otherwise I'd cry. How do you come away with a race like this that you guys dominated? Oh, those sneaky little buggers there. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. You know, uh, it was, that, you know, good strategy and, and credit to obviously uh, Andretti and, and Hunter Ray taking the win there. But yeah, our Chevy uh, Toyotas were, uh, Chevy target cars were fantastic tonight. But I just couldn't believe it. You know, TK ran a hell of a race, uh, led, you know, he must have led, God, 250 laps or something. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we had to work on our car a lot. We just, you know, I gave him a race there for a little while, led some laps, but I burnt the front tires off my car. So, you know, credit to the team, uh, but we uh, just came short there by a couple of spots, and, you know, hopefully we'll come back in Toronto and get some, uh, some victories. See you next week. Kelly? Elio Castroneves was also a bit of a sitting duck there at the end of the race. He was third. He'll finish eighth. But you do take over the points lead solely. But uh, how surprised were you by the speed of those guys who were on fresh tires? Well, first of all, the hit touch car from Friday uh, uh, to today, it was like a night and day. I can't believe it. We were right there battling for the lead with the Ganassi guys. And actually, it was a, an exciting race. And uh, all of a sudden, um, well, first of all, why they add 50 laps? You know, I'm like, come on. I mean, but uh, I had no idea. They never told me actually they have fresh tires until uh, Hunter Hayes were right beside me. He kind of put me on the gray, and I'm kind of lost a little bit. And then it started like the freight train, freight train. Everybody's passing me. I'm like, really? Is that happening right now? But um, hey, I take points lead any day, any time. It's great for us. Great for Team Penske and our. Uh, 
Now to move on to uh, Toronto. Thanks, Elio. Thanks. First time this year that Elio has been the points leader, and he leads by nine over Penske teammate Will Power. Hunter Ray jumps two spots up into third, and further back, Joseph Newgarden, who finished second, jumps three places to get into the top 15. We'll wrap things up from Iowa when we come back. For the 14th time in his Verizon IndyCar Series career, Ryan Hunter Ray. The reigning Indy 500 champion stands atop the podium. And boy, oh boy, Paul, it was a super way to finish. Fresh tires meant the world. Well, today we had, we had uh, tornadoes, we had rain, we had sun. And the last five laps of the race was a Ryan Hunter Ray tornado. And he just rocketed through the field like everybody was standing still. A tremendous win. Well, I just, I just, I just feel that Tony Kanaan led 240 odd laps, and look at this coming up with just a couple of laps to go. I bet he just could not believe it. What a strategy call, though, by Michael Andretti. I mean, all kudos to him. It was an amazingly gutsy call, and it sure worked. And worked as well for Sarah Fisher Hartman Racing as well to get no Joseph Newgarden to a career equal high of second and Kanana much needed but somewhat disappointing podium. We hope you enjoyed tonight as much as we did. It had a little bit of everything and a super race at Iowa Speedway for the eighth year the Verizon IndyCar Series has come here. Up next, it's Kurt Busch 36. The Verizon IndyCar Series continues here on NBCSN next week for the first of two races from the streets of Toronto next Saturday at 3 o'clock Eastern. As always, NBCSports.com is the place to go to get all of your IndyCar information. We congratulate Ryan hunter Ray, and we say thanks and farewell to our legendary director, Gary Clem. Thanks, Gary. <laughs>